Home Plan Commission public hearing regular meeting to order for Tuesday, February 13, 2024 at 4 o'clock p.m. Item number two is a roll call. Starting on my right, please. Wiesner here. Gabriel here. Janzak here. Baker. Dilgi here. Jumadi here. Capo here. Also present is Town Attorney Nick Flanagan and Support Specialist Taylor Ochinski. Uh, item number three is to certify the posting of the meeting. Taylor. <laughs> Dual duties. <laughs> All right. So I certify the posting for today's meeting for the Town of Rome Plan Commission public hearing and regular meeting at 4 p.m. That it was posted to the Rome Municipal Building at 1:40 or 1:32 p.m. on Monday, October 30th. Okay, this is the right one. My apologies. Okay, it was posted on Thursday, January 25th at the Rome Town Hall at 3.54 p.m. Posted at Quick Trip at 4 p.m. Posted at the Nakusa Port Edward State Bank at 4.08 p.m and emailed to the Wisconsin Rapids Tribune at 9.03 a.m. Okay, thank you. Number four is to approve the agenda. A motion to approve. Motion to approve as presented. Second. Motion by Jerry, seconded by Diana to approve the agenda as presented. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, then all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Number five is the citizen comment portion of the agenda. Um, the first half of this is for people that want to speak regarding something that's not on the agenda. Taylor, do you have any orange cards from anyone? Uh, no. Okay. For those of you in the audience, I'm, we're pretty sure you're here for one specific reason. Um, and the commission will, take, will also take comment from the public on an agenda item as called by the chair, but not during the citizen comment portion. Please note that once the commission begins discussion on an agenda item, no further comment will be allowed from the public on that issue. The next section is no action is contemplated except possible referral to a future agenda. Item number six, information updates, recent correspondence, current events, and announcements. <coughs> Bill, Lori, I Diana, nothing. I would just like to welcome the newest member to our plan commission, Mr. Tom Gabriel. Uh, He's uh, here for this first exciting meeting, so enjoy, <laughs> Tom, and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anything for announcements from? No. no okay. We'll move on to item number seven to open the public hearing. And 7A is consideration of a rev revised site plan, plan of operation for Wisconsin Trap Shooting Association to construct a storage building on the property located at 1312 Akron Drive, also, also described as Government Lot 14, Section 6, Town 20 North, Range 6 East, Town of Rome, Adams County, Wisconsin, with a parcel number of 30-608. Three, three Taylor? Nick? So to save her voice, okay. I, I'm going to take on the, the reading in of uh, the department staff report, if that's all right, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Please. So uh, I'll start with then the 7A uh, public hearing item. Applicant Wisconsin Trap Shooting Association requests approval for a revision to their site plan plan of operation for the property located at 1312 Akron Drive. Applicant would like to construct a new 54 by 120 foot storage building near the southwest parking lot area for target storage. An updated site plan, plan of operation, review application, checklist, supplemental information, associated map and renderings are included in your packet. And for reference, the last approved site plan, plan of operation from 2019 is also included in the packet. Letters were sent to three property owners within 200 feet of the affected property. Thank you. Uh, representative from the Trap Shooters Association? Whoever would like to speak regarding your proposal, would you mind to step up to the podium? Oh, <coughs> basically, we need to put up a new storage building here. Um, is that red button on, sir, on that microphone? No. There we go. There. Yeah, it's we want to put a new storage building up to store our clay targets and stuff in because we get them in several semi loads at a time. So, um, and we need room to put them inside where they're not going to get wet. The 
dome tent that we've got there and stuff that we started with is starting to age and needs to get replaced sooner or later here and and we've got somebody right now that wants to donate the money to put up this building excellent so, okay. so that's why we started you know that's why we want to do it now i see okay um is there any commissioner questions for this gentleman uh, regarding the trap shooters proposal um i didn't see a landscape design in this maybe i was missing it is there a landscape design anywhere around the building or anything that would require a landscape design in this plan um, the site plan that you know it, of? it's i mean the land and stuff is already cleared you know it's for where this is going to be going i don't know what what you need and you know, as far as there was pictures and stuff aerial pictures i thought of the land in yeah here, i saw that yeah of where it was going and stuff so <coughs> And then, um, is there going to be any kind of a sign affixed to the building that would identify the building as a storage facility, or? Uh, we can put something on there if it's required. You know, I, I it, it isn't required. I was just wondering if there was going to be a sign, if we would have to get a look at that sign itch. But if there's not going to be anything. No, it's, we weren't planning on putting any kind of a sign on okay. it. And you did you do are showing that there will be dumpsters. Are those going to be screened or hidden, or is there going to be something that will? Well, it's we've had dumpsters out there and stuff in the past always for the cardboard. Um, they've always been sitting along the edge of the parking lot, and that's basically going to be the same thing here. Although we are planning on putting a compactor in there now for the cardboard so that we can recycle that and send it off ourselves rather than sending it into one of these trash companies that recycles it. But, so we well, might put a cardboard compactor inside this building too. So. I, I think we've been requesting or requiring basically screening of dumpsters and trash refuse, things of that sort. Yeah. Well, it's, they're all covered. You know the ones that we get in there are covered so to, to prevent the the refuse from falling out of the container but yeah. screening from public view oh okay is what i'm referring to all right um yeah it's up to this point they have not been fenced or anything like that okay so, um, i didn't know that that was going to be a new requirement so but like i said if we start compacting the cardboard that'll be inside the building the compactor will so that'll all be hidden then from the public we'll have the dumpsters outside other than just the, the couple that we've got for the garbage so well i i believe that we would want to have those screened yeah yeah we can yeah we can do that okay okay um Are we to be requesting a uh, performance assurance in this regard, with regard to the storage building being? Yeah. So I, I would just know <coughs> generally if, if that question is directed at me. Yes, it is. I'm uh, sorry. That we, so in this case, we have had uh, prior approval back from 2019. Uh, so we have generally you know, approved those that site plan. I don't know that we would add a performance Another assurance performance. On, on this one, okay. although uh, your, your Questions kind of a lead into the one question I had. Um, if you wouldn't mind me following up with that, so it, it's not necessarily performance assurance as much as it is a denotion on your on your revised site plan. You have a denotion on that uh, for a proposed Hall of Fame building that you would note that is is a few years off yeah. uh, potentially. Uh, is it your intention then to come back to the plan commission? Yeah, obviously you're not going to have fleshed out plans maybe if, if it's that far off, but then would it be your uh, intention to come back to the Planning Commission for approval uh, at the time that you were yes. ready to go forward yeah. with that? So you, yeah. you would be okay with a uh, condition of, of that approval being that, they, that, that the Planning Commission needs to see those plans at yeah. whatever time you were ready. Yeah. Any other things there? Uh, Um, I just have a, um, with regard to the design standards in our zoning, they, it, there are references to a large structure, um, and it, 
It should avoid a monolithic big box appearance. Buildings which advertise by appearance like storage buildings, um, that they should be avoided. And that also if they lack design details, those should also be avoided. And I do know that it, this is just a storage facility and that's all you're going to have it for. But um, I just wanted to point out that the design standards ask that we take that under consideration with regard to the design of the building that you're proposing. It's going to be basically the same form design of the existing building that's there, the same color tin, the same you know basic design. So, um, so it will match in with that. So. I have a quick question. I don't think this is. Uh, I don't think you can see it from the road. Right? No, no, it does not show from the road. It's hidden by trees and stuff. Center of your property right yeah. yeah. Yeah, you'd have to drive into the driveway to see it, so and it is still hidden by the trees and stuff even <coughs> in there. So like if you're in the campground section you probably won't see the building at all. So um I th those are all my questions, okay. Jim. Thank you. Uh, anyone else on the committee? Have any questions for this gentleman? Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak either for or against uh, the proposed new building for Wisconsin Trap Shooters Association? Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Seven B. Consideration of the issuance of a conditional use permit for the following purpose: allow for a campground at the property located on Archer Lane owned by Barnum Bay Beach and Marina LLC. Also described as Lot 1, Certified Survey Map 4670. Located in Government Lot 2 of Section 28, Town 20 North, Range 5 East, Town of Rome, Adams County, Wisconsin, with a parcel number of 030-408-15. Nick? Uh, applicant Barnum Bay Beach and Marina LLC has submitted a conditional use permit for the 6.38 acre parcel located on Archer Lane, requesting use as a campground. The site is zone B1, for which Campground Recreational Vehicle Park is listed as a conditional use under Code Section 360-78. Additionally, under Town Code 247-4, a campground license must be obtained from the town and campground permit issued from Wisconsin Part Department of Safety and Professional Services. Finally, the Town Code Article uh, 26 sets forth requirements with the Site Plan Plan of Operation for new business development and associated development and design standards. Including your packet is a conditional use permit application, campground license application, site plan plan of operation application, checklist, associated map and renderings. Additionally, you'll find the interim zoning administrator report with additional items of note from his review of the proposed development. And a final note uh, that consideration of the site plan uh, plan of operation is contingent on the plan commission's decision on agenda item number 12. So I'm not going to read you the same thing again. Uh, just a, a note of that and that letters were sent. Uh, to 18 property owners within 200 feet of the affected property. Thank you. Um, the gentleman or whoever would like to step up to for the proposed conditional use permit. Hi. Yes. Hi. I'm Mark Anderson. I'm the main owner of uh, the lure in the okay. Barton Bay. So we are applying to do the campgrounds. Uh, this is a six acre parcel that's currently right adjacent to the restaurant. Uh, what we are hoping to do is put in 30 to 35 uh, pads where we could have campers, RVs park. Uh, this would not be a wild, poorly kept place. It would not be a nuisance. Uh, the application does have requests to also be able to put uh, campground owned units on these spots so we could have RVs or um, like uh, model home uh, type spots on it, um, luxury park model homes that we would be able to have there. Uh, I have samples of what we would be using as our finishings if you'd like to see them uh, and I'm happy to answer any other questions that you'd have about the application packet that you have. Yeah, I think the samples we would wait uh, till we got to the point where there was site plan and plan of operation to look at that That's kind fine. of stuff. Um, 
is there okay anyone in the audience uh, you, you're oh, I don't want to I'm touch you off I'm happy to answer any questions okay. I'm happy to answer any um, questions so anyone in the audience wants to speak in favor of this proposal is there anyone that would like to speak against this proposal okay we'll just kind of point you out and call you by sir do you want to step up to the microphone first please Right up where this gentleman is. Yep. <coughs> Name is uh, Andy Platts. Uh, my wife, my wife Janice, and I live at 1716 Archer Lane. We're directly across Archer Lane from about the middle middle of this proposed campground. Okay. Uh, we've owned the house here for several years. We're here quite frequently, all season long. We've had a great relationship with Allure, and Tom and the crew was great. And even the last few months with new ownership, it's been a a very good relationship and it's been well controlled and you know they they know how to run a bar they know how to run a lure and uh when we've had issues noise issues they're very responsive at the point but it's on their property uh, i'm a professional engineer i develop uh, sites i'm very familiar with this process and when i look at what you're trying to do is shoehorn a high density campground into a six acre parcel it's a crazy use of land it's not what that it's not the right fit for land around it with all the residential single housing when you start looking at the economic factors that are outlined in a letter without going into detail from a tax base, just from overall revenue generation, it makes no sense from a land use standpoint, which is what conditional use point are about. Beyond all the other issues of looking at campgrounds, and we all know campgrounds can be and cannot be, but whether it be noise, extra light pollution, the aesthetics of driving down Archer Lane, the additional noise, ATVs and generators, RVs running, there's a lot to be controlled. That's if, if it even goes forward, it has to be an awful lot, but just the density of that, and when you look at the where the stakes are with the right-of-way stakes, a 30-foot offset, you're going to have these RVs backed up very, very close to all those houses on Archer Lane. There's no way it won't be an aesthetic issue and a noise issue and just added traffic. It's already, you know, we can, we can work with the, um, uh, the, the watercraft shows that I have there and the sailboat shows, the fishing tournament. It's awesome. They've all been good, and those, those sites have been controlled right at the lure when they've camped out but they've really kept the curfew down. It's been wonderful for noise and have been very responsive. Something like this, it's very difficult. Very difficult to control and ensure they're 24 hours a day. We live there 24 hours a day. The owners do not. The owners do not even live in the, in the, in the town. And so who's gonna monitor who's gonna control it? So we've got a lot invested in these houses. We keep our properties up to a very high degree. From a tax basis, we pay a fair share of the taxes in the area. This will definitely degrade the tax base for sure. So I strongly oppose the uh, development of this campground. Okay. Were you able to sign the clipboard with your name and address and stuff? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, there was another gentleman over in this section here, I believe, maybe. Come up, sir, please. Can you ask them questions? We're going to when we're done with the audience. Oh, you could, sure. I'm sorry. Yeah, if, you know, we're hoping to keep this moving so that you're not asking or saying the same thing that that gentleman did, if you don't mind. Understood. Uh, Chad Bonestead, 569 Barnum Bay, yeah. um, right, down, right down the street um, from the proposed property. Um, would reiterate everything that my neighbor said, Andy. Um, you know, we, we built our house probably three or four years ago, um, one of the highest um, assessed values in the area. Um, and it was all for the intent to have a nice, quiet place to view and, and visit on the lake, um, which this property would, would certainly disintegrate. Um, I did know the former owner of the lure quite well. Um, and he didn't build a campground there because when they did have temporary sites and events that were going on there, not many of those people went into the lure to, to spend any money. Um, and it was more of a headache than it was, than it was a, um, a benefit. Um, I would agree with Tom. You guys got a great establishment. I love it. We go there all the time. My kid used to work there, as a matter of fact. Um, but, but this proposed plan, I think, would be very detrimental to the 14 to $15 million tax base that I put in my letter of assessed values in the near, nearing community with over $200,000 of taxes that they're paying um, could have a very big detriment on those, those property owners. Um, and I've spoken to, I think, almost 30 of the 35 property owners within those two establishments, and all of them are vehemently opposed to this, this, this uh, proposed campground on that site for the reasons that uh, Andy mentioned and the ones that I've just declared. Did you have a question? I do. With sure. regard to the tax impact that you attach to your, um, <coughs> you said the potential positive 10% on campground, negative 10% on Barnum Bay. Where do you derive that that number from, that figure from? Is that uh, research that you've done? Is that verifiable? Is that factual? 
the, the, the assessed values of close to $15 million and the $200,000 of taxes that are paid are from your guys' website um, fr from, the, from the county. So I think those are all valid numbers. Certainly, I cannot predict exactly what it's going to do to property values. Um, but I think if you look at the average price of the homes in that area compared with a campground with 35 sites sitting strictly across from them and right on the path on the way into them, it can't possibly improve it. It has to go down. If it goes down by a mere 10%, that's $20,000 of, of tax base that this county loses. Okay, but do you have any anything to verify that if a campground is placed within a residential area, that the property values will decrease 10 percent <clears throat> i did not bring anything specifically with that, okay. that would dispute that i've looked Have at a bunch seen of anything i've like seen that? i've seen a ton of things that would dispute back and forth both ways because okay. there's always two sides to this argument Absolutely. Um, <laughs> um but but i think you need to really look at the area that this campground is being placed mm -hmm. in it's very dense it's very small compared to a nice a bunch of beautiful homes around it um, which I think is very different than if you put a campground, which I would be, I've attended and I've gone and I would love to have in the community in the appropriate space. I just don't feel like this is the appropriate space right near the lake um, with, with not only what Andy mentioned, but also my concern is I'm not up there all the time. I live in Illinois um, and I, like I said, I have a very nice house there and we have a very nice pier with six or seven boats on it. Like how do I control people going down there and messing with the boats, messing with the pier, my insurance going up, our, our homeowners, association, homeowners association insurance going up because damage gets caused to the pier. Someone gets injured on the pier from the campground. Um, you know, we don't have that risk today. Um, but that certainly would would be a, a very big risk in our minds um, going forward if the campground was put in that place. Have you do you think if you were to speak with um, someone that provides you your insurance that they would tell you I've, a risk assessment on something like I've, this? I've put a call into them. I have not been able to do that yet, okay. but I do have a discussion with them because, matter of fact, our insurance is due here this month. Oh, okay. <laughs> those are my those are my Thank questions. Thank you. Okay, uh, somebody, there was somebody in the middle, sir. And um, sir, did you have a chance to sign the clipboard with your name and address? Thank you. My name is Rick Georgeson. I live at 489 Highland Place. I've uh, lived in the town of Rome for 24 years. I've sailed out of Barnum Bay since Barnum Bay was built. Uh, that's uh, 36 years or so. I've sailed on Petenwell for 55 years. Pretty familiar, I love the area. Um, I ride my bicycle on Barnum Bay Trail down to the Lure and around the condos daily, do five miles every morning after breakfast. And anybody that's in the area probably has seen me. I've met Dan, Dan's doing a super job at the restaurant, does a super job at the marina. Things are really looking up. I mean, we love the place, we love the place. But really, I have some serious concerns. This just is not an appropriate location for what we're talking about. It's it's right 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 on the backside of some very nice condominiums. I'm quite a distance from it, so I won't see it. But people that are in that area, it's just not a fit. And once that, if that was to go in place, condominiums that would be would be you know few. Right now, when a condominium goes up for sale, it seems like it's not on the on the market for. Two months, and they're gone. With with the campground there, I just don't know if that would really be the case. <coughs> I have taken many calls in the last week from people who own property in the area, but they're in either Florida or Arizona people that I know and they're very concerned our association has written a letter Archer Park you've got that um, love the place it's just not a good fit my suggestion my suggestion is to take that six acres or whatever it is and divide it off into five or six lots whatever it is and they would sell buildings that would be placed on those six acres would be just s such a more better fit and the investment that the lure has in the land they could return bring their money back and they wouldn't have a headache around a campground thank you 
Any questions for this gentleman? Thank you for your work on the Packers, too. Thank you very much for that. Uh, anyone else in the kind of the middle section there? Okay, sir. Brian Peterson, 1728. Um, in the interest of brevity, I don't want to be repetitive. Sure. Uh, I did submit a letter. Are the letters going to be read into the public record? It's going to take, take forever to read them all in, but they're all part of the record. Okay. Because I, I don't want to repeat everything that I said in the letter. Okay. It would bore everybody. Um, what, was his, what was your name? I'm sorry. Brian Peterson. Okay. And each commissioner 17th. has all copies of all the correspondence, emails that went with this. Perfect. Perfect. Conditional use permit proposal. Older follow-up. So okay. each have a chance to read them. Uh, again, I don't want to be repetitive. The bottom line, uh, again, I can't be more supportive of the lure. Um, in fact, we were hesitant to object because I don't want to damage the relationship with the lure. We want to help support them. But this is the wrong project in the wrong area. Uh, for all of the reasons that I detailed in the letter, I think it's very important to consider how this would affect the neighborhood character. It will change it dramatically and not to the positive. For those reasons that I, I would ask that this be rejected. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Anyone else over on that side of the room? Okay, and you had a chance to sign a clipboard as well, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Mark, is it? Yes. Right? Okay. Your turn back up there. To all right. Thank you. So I think um, I appreciate all the comments and the concerns. Um, I understand what you are all worried about. Uh, <coughs> what we would say is we don't expect this to be uh, a nuisance for you. We don't expect it to be something that actually brings property values down uh, from what we have seen as, as our research. Uh, and I don't have the research to hand you to prove it, uh, but we have not seen significant decreases if it is a well-run, well-maintained uh, property. Uh, the concern was about this being high density. Uh, campgrounds are often zoned uh, to approve up to uh, double the number of units that we are looking at. They often will approve 10 spaces per acre, uh, so up to 60 uh, is commonly approved, and we're looking for 30, 35. Uh, we expect this to be well run. We would be happy to have quiet hours. We would be happy to treat this exactly as we treat everything that's been happening at the rest of our property. Uh, and everybody seems in agreement that things have been looking up, things have been doing well. Uh, Anne has been doing an amazing job with it, and we expect that it will continue to do well on the current business and in the campground. Uh, we, I heard concern about you know how would this affect people coming out onto our pier. I mean, we've had people at our business for decades at this point, and I haven't heard about anybody who's gone onto other piers uh, this year. We'd be happy <coughs> to have signs up. We'd be happy to talk about fencing if you want. Um, we have a larger than required buffer uh, for the setbacks. Uh, I think it would be minimal eyesore, if anything, from the road or from the neighbor houses. Uh, there would be trees surrounding essentially everything except where the driveway in and the driveway out is set to be. Uh, I think this would be a great thing for the, the area. And we've actually had quite a few people stop in saying they're looking forward to having families stay there when they come visit instead of parking their RV in their driveway uh, or parking you know, this campground 15 minutes away. They'd be excited to have that where we are located. So that's where we are with this. We think it would be great for the area. Uh, it obviously would be good for our business, and we don't want it to be something that created us being a bad neighbor. So our goal would be to have this and to treat our neighbors well. Commissioners. Yeah, please. If that's okay with you, you can, can we have more back and forth? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Have you ever run a campground, or has anybody on your team run a campground? So, I have not run a campground. Uh, I have another business that functions kind of similarly. I have a ski hill as well, uh, a downhill ski hill with Airbnb units, and uh, we have kind of camping that occurs there. Uh, but no, not a not a specific campground. I, I've had several rental properties, and, and as a matter of fact, our homeowners association has all voted against. Uh, I think it's Oakland, 11, 11 to 13, or something like that, against just even short-term rentals. And I, 
can completely understand the question of short-term rentals. I think they are treated very differently because there's not staff there daily. There's not staff there watching it. Uh, you know, the best. Have staff there 24 seven. No, but there's staff that would be there for the time that would normally be the active hours. Right. Uh, problems are going to happen at night when there's nothing else to do. Or to go to. No, I understand what you're saying, and those would be guests that wouldn't be welcome. They could be kicked out. Um, it's very common to have noise monitors if we're not there. It's very common to have uh, somebody drive through the neighborhood to make sure that it's being kept up, to go to the, the campground to make sure it's being kept up, to make sure that it's not being loud. Uh, there are things that could be done, and we would not want to let it get away from and what we want it to and be. And I appreciate that. As I said before, we run a great business, but this is totally different. And I'm not going to be up there to be monitoring it on the 24 7 that you're not there. I understand. So, so that's <coughs> I understand what you're saying. I hear you. I I don't have that same fear for it. I think it's all based on the the way you screen your guests, the way you screen tenants. Uh, we would be using a professional uh, service that does the vetting and <coughs> renting, you know, similar to an Airbnb type uh, service. The the one we're looking at is called CampSpot, and they handle a lot of that ability to screen pe people as they're booking and um, to be in charge of of what is happening when they're there. I'm happy to provide you from my Airbnb experience of the three or four that I've owned. Yeah. The problems that I've had using a professional service. I hear I, I, I have I have an Airbnb as well. I mean and there's been good there's been bad the the good uh, has far outweighed the bad for me as the owner and from our neighbors who we check in with regularly there. Okay. I think Mr. Jorgensen you had another yes. Mark are you aware that there's a a campground being at the corner of 13 and C. And I understand it's up to 300 sites. Yes, I, I have heard that. And I would, if I was their neighbor, I'd be much more worried than what we're looking for. Uh, this is a different scale, it's a different plan. Ours are going to be much more, uh, the, the units, the camp spaces will be separated a little bit. It's not going to be a parking lot of people and vehicles. <coughs> I'm, I'm Why don't you step up to the microphone, I'm please? The lure, and you may or may not be interested in this, and I would just love for you guys just to see. It's easier to see than to say, hey, you're, you're opening up a campground. And most likely, most people think when you have a campground, you're you're clearing the land, you're opening up an uh, eyesore to people, and uh, you know we have designed this specifically for our residents so that it was a wooded campground without an eyesore from the road. Um, not only is part of, of the township here and the county of, was, was one of their biggest concerns is to make sure that our local neighbors weren't bothered by an eyesight of a campground. Um, I mean, it's, it's, I have it here. I got kind of an overlay of where we're at and what it is. I mean, you're more than welcome to look at it, I'd be more welcome if you there pass it through. The there was some okay, left there. outside, so right? Um, and I just want to address one gentleman over here said something about generators and such running. We're, we're fully powered, it would be a fully powered campground. There'd be a no generator tolerance to that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And our um, water and septic, water and septic in, in the garbage area. Um, our plans is to hire within the neighborhood. Um, I've talked personally to a lot of the board members at the condo association next to us and like Mark said that there are some of them I've only talked to five because of them are gone for the winter um, but a lot of them were, were open to it just for the fact is they have family that travel and now they don't have to go so far to see their family and their camper like he said don't have to sit in their driveway um, it's it's gonna be a more of a high-end campground than it, than it is Petenwell Park we're not putting in a pool and, and slides and uh, not that we're not family friendly, but you're not gonna have kids running around like crazy. It's mainly for a quiet setting to enjoy the lake. It's, um, I live two blocks from there as far as who is gonna be overseeing this, who is gonna be viable where he's, you know, don't live in the neighborhood where I do too, you know. Um, if there was any means of this gonna be 
uh, an issue for property taxes, lower assessment of your house. You know, I would also be sitting here with you guys too, but I live right around the corner. Um, I, I think it's a great idea. Um, it would, for those that see our jet ski races, camp, campers all over the place, I think that's more of a nuisance than it is to have them in one area in a clean campground. Being well taken care of. And being ran, hopefully, not only by us, but some of our local retirees that would love to get out of the house during the day and go around and, and help clean up and get paid for it. Something for them to get out of the house and do something. Um, you know, uh, we put, I talked to, <coughs> Ever since I've been in this position, running the lure, a lot of customers come in, and yes, yeah, some are like you guys, you know, a lot of you here are against it. Some of them are for it. I, I just wanted you to clearly know this is not going to be Pete and Will Park. This isn't going to be Fireside Campground where everything is cleared out. You got one open field of just campers that do make a mess. I, I got a brand new 2020 fifth wheel camper. I love to camp. There's campgrounds I wish I couldn't, I didn't want to go to, but when you're traveling, you gotta, you gotta camp there. But this is a place that is designed for our neighbors being respectful to, and designed for people that just don't want to camp where there's a bunch of kids. And I'm not saying I'm, we're not, we, we don't have a sign saying no kids allowed. But a lot of people do travel. And a lot of people do travel with the hopes that they don't have to listen to the camper next to them screaming all night. Babies crying, kids screaming, playing and throwing rocks at your car. This is designed to be able just to get away and relax and bring your boat and go fishing, have a beer, have a dinner, and most of them get up and leave tomorrow. And it's not to hurt nobody. Um, that's all I'd say. Thank you. I appreciate everything that you said. But we don't live two blocks away. We don't Correct. live in Fitchburg. We live right across the street. Correct. And I haven't done the math, but I think you'll see how many people showed up at 4 o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon to appreciate object to this. With the numbers, I think you have the immediate neighbors over 90% sure. saying, no, this isn't a good fit. Yeah. Well, I respect that it probably benefits the lure, if you did not own the lure, would you be um, proposing to put a campground on this site? If I didn't own it? Mm -hmm. So you're saying if we lived across the street? If we no, were your neighbor, it, no. this benefits I think the lure. It's a, I, I told <coughs> Tom before I bought it, he should have done it. I told him he shouldn't do it and let me buy it when it was done. But is uh, this a viable standalone project or is yes. this just to benefit the lure? No. I I think it would be viable standalone. I think uh, if you look at what... So you would propose it even if you didn't own the lure? And I own the lot? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's it would be perfect for the spot. I think it is a fabulous use of the space. I think as a six acre parcel, it is not overly dense. Uh, I think that it is located in a beautiful location near the water, near the beach, and the campground would do very well. I think it would do very well with 60 spots but that's not my vision for it. My vision <coughs> is to have a lower density, quieter, quiet hours, a place that people can come and when the bar closes, sure. this place is also quiet. Uh, I would just ask the commission to look at the people that are truly affected by this around the surrounding area, how many showed up in the percentage of objection. This isn't a close call, guys. We, we love you, you're doing a great no, job. No, I hear you. But from the people I, I, that are living in, in this area. Uh, well, the, the, the naysayers are often the loudest. And well, they're the ones that are being affected by most directly. No, I think 90% the people that are, right I, from a joint I, just hear say, I think that the people who are okay with it aren't here. You know, either they don't want to argue with their neighbors or they just assume it's gonna happen. But the people who aren't happy about it are loud. And that's that's common. But we're the neighbors. I understand that. The people that are for it aren't the neighbors. We well we represent the neighbors. We've had neighbors that have stopped by and are excited for it as well. But we've so quantified it with the association eleven to thirteen. That's fifty percent ish. No, eleven to thirteen was a different issue about short term 
rentals sure. in the Barn and <coughs> Association. In regards right. to this, the neighboring association submitted the letter. What was the numbers on that letter? 33 out of 35 objected. In Barnum Bay, I don't know how many we have represented here, but I'd say we're over 90% in Barnum and, Bay and is this objects. all within 200 feet, or is this just people that are 1,500 feet, 3,000 feet, a mile away? All, all well, I'm within 200, 200 feet. feet. Yeah. All yeah. 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 Like but, and I would, I would almost say to re, re-approach it if needed to be when everybody is at snow burdens okay. and those that, is that what Nick said? the same right. amount that I've spoken with yeah. prior to snow burden had no problem with it. I mean, there's a there's a fine line of kind of like the ones that but are against it are here, but the ones that are probably 300 that are for it are out of state. But what we're saying is that it's not like 50% of the surrounding lots have not been represented. Yeah. It, the Snowbird thing would make sense if we've only heard from 50%. But when you have 33 out of 35 object, again, we haven't quantified it in the Barnum Bay, but I'm sure it's 90% people have weighed in. They have had the opportunity and they're saying this isn't a good thing. Okay, let me let uh, some of these other people weigh in that might have something to say. Uh, sir, you had raised your hand for a moment. Why don't you just uh, step up so that we can hear you. Uh, this is being broadcast over Channel 300, so we want everybody to be able to hear that uh, what's happening. You need your name up here, too. My name is Rodney Peterson. I'm at uh, 1725 Archer Lane. We had spelled out in the letter some of the serious concerns we have, mm -hmm. and you have chosen not to read that letter. The concerns really need to be ad addressed and I don't know how we're going to hear the response to the concerns. Example, campfires right in the middle of the woods, okay? Campers love campfires. What protection do we have? Adams County had a horrible fire years ago, okay? How can you control people that are indulging and having this huge campfire in the middle of a pine forest. Now, that was one of the issues on the letter, mm -hmm. among other ones. So my, my, I'm a little surprised why you may not want to read every letter, but why don't you read at least one of them that has all these concerns, and um, we'll never find out how uh, you were able to discuss them. Maybe you don't think they're an issue, but they are. Well, Fire is an issue to me. You need to give us a chance to talk to him first. We haven't had our chance to question him and even talk about any possible conditions if this did get approved. So we have a lot of questions that we want to ask this gentleman as well as to how things are going to be done. Do you, do you uh, reply back to us uh, with our concerns? They'll, be a, they'll talk about it publicly. Okay. Thank you very much. But I appreciate it. I your understand help. what you're saying, certainly. Yeah, I appreciate your help. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wants to speak for the first time? Um, Rick, you had your hand up again. Did you have anything you wanted to add that's different than what's been said? I want to be careful with how I phrase this, but I did hear from the podium that there's five people that lived in the condominiums that were for this. Okay. Okay, commissioners, our turn. Oh, did you want to go first? When you said 60 sites, yes. are you also taking into consideration those additional buildings like the laundromat and the and the uh, public restroom facilities that you had put? No. So w what we're applying for would be the 35 slots, the 30, 35 pads uh, with we had said there'd be an office and a restroom. Uh, when I said 10 sites per acre, 60 sites, 64 <coughs> sites, whatever it would be based on the number of acres we have, uh, many campgrounds and RV parks will do that in addition to a pool, parking, uh, the office, all of that. So they would have more than 10 buildings or 10 permissible units per acre. And then um, our are you planning on operating yearly? We uh, have all, all year? We have requested for all 12 months. All 12 months? There's demand uh, for uh, 
uh, winter, fall and winter use for snowmobilers, ice fishermen. Yes, we've had a lot of people ask if we will ever be able to offer that, and we say we hope so. Can you address the concerns of a lot of people with regard to the traffic that will be coming into that location? Well, I think it's not going to be as big of a traffic issue as people are concerned about. We're talking... If you have 60, potentially... 30, 30 35. 35. Uh, of which, you know, maybe we'll have them 100% occupied holiday weekends or something, but you know, the traditional campground is 50 to 60% normal occupancy, plus or minus a little. I think we would be a little higher than that in the summer and a little lower than that in the winter. Uh, but you're talking 30 or 35 cars, you know, that would come with a tent or with their RV uh, per day. That's not a huge amount. And really, our goal would not be that people stay for one night. They also aren't going to stay for 15 nights. But I think if people were staying for two or three or four nights at a time, uh, we're talking about an RV coming in, spending a couple days and leaving. Uh, that's not a huge traffic increase compared to what we already bring in in the summer to our location uh, for just guests coming to the restaurant, the beach, the marina. Uh, this campground would be adding a very small amount of traffic. Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. I just want to clarify yeah. the, the potential, if I'm understanding you correctly, I'm no, I'm sorry. I can talk louder. No, it's too. no, it's not your fault. It's tonight, and it just gets bad sometimes. Um, you're saying you could potentially put 60 here. You only are interested in 35. We are never going to apply for right. more than what we're asking for now, which what, is the 35. What is it that caused that caused you to only ask for 35? There must be something in your mind that you're only developing yeah. 35 sites. Uh, more than that would change the density and change the feel of the place. All I right. don't want. Unit, 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 you know, RV, 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 RV. I want RV, some woods, RV. All right, woods. let me ask you this question. Yes. Density is a con is density is a concern yes. for the development. Would you be open to fewer? I think it would depend on how many fewer, but yes. Okay. Uh, then let me ask you another question. Yes. Based on this map, it looks like the open sites for the ones that would be coming and going, pulling in and out yeah. on the outside. If, I'm yes. reading, if my reading this map correctly. Yes, the way that it's written right now, uh, we would have the, uh, the RV slots are closer to the road, and the camper type spots would the be. The permanent sites with the luxury model yes. tiny homes are, or the luxury Those would be closer to model. the restaurant, as how it is right now. And okay. if this was something that the commission wanted changed and you know, the nice thing about all of the units, the park model and big homes that we're looking at, uh, they're very nice and they're on wheels. They are DOT certified. So mm -hmm. if we don't like where they are, we can move them. Mm -hmm. We could put them on a different spot. Uh, on this side of the I would have no development. Problem. Yeah, no problem with wherever so they So fewer for density reasons and the nicer ones yeah, with, no with the buffer in mind. Yeah. Put those in a different location and within the Quite possible, yeah. Uh, you know, right now we're trying to get this approved, and I don't actually expect that we will have the budget to put these uh, park model type homes there for maybe this season, maybe next summer. Uh, I mean, this is going to be a process of proving that this works and getting it. Uh, how many would you start with? Well, we get all the pads built, and in terms of how many we put, it would depend on the budget. Uh, is this camp spot something you would initiate from the beginning? Yes. Yeah, it, be camp spot simple. is essentially Airbnb, right. but for campgrounds, RV, RV it's spots. It's very similar to what we use for our situation with short-term rentals in the town. They have a reservation system that kind of oversees and... Yes. But it wouldn't replace having our on-site manager, management, you know, system everybody that. there cleaning and keeping track of this would be just one layer of security to keep the place functioning and keep it nice. Okay. And where in here, Adams County would be the one that is responsible for the sanitary. Have you had that discussion with Adams County yet as to where that fits in this plan? We've been speaking with 
the Adams County, Wood County Health <coughs> Departments and with Garrison Septic. Uh, they know it will fit somewhere in the center. They didn't want to find a specific spot yet because they wanted to make sure the plan gets approved before they start uh, testing the soil and pulling down too far. But we know that it should be able to be on that interior portion of the, the plan inside the circle. And just, in, just for reference, yes. um, Lake Arrowhead has a campground Yes. on a golf course, and I'm just using this for reference. I lived near that campground for 16 years in a home that's now valued at and sold for over $400,000, and I understand the concerns, and those homes were still assessed, and I understand your concerns, and for a very long time, we left our doors unlocked. This is a business and a commercial area, and we'll have these discussions and these questions. But understanding our zoning laws and our, our attorney will help us with this, but there's lots we have to talk about this evening. But I lived in that area for a long time, and there's homes in that residential area and a golf course, and it's something we'll have to talk about, but those are some points, I guess, that will come up, and I understand you have expensive homes in this area, but it is a commercial area, and I'll have questions from the attorney tonight, like the rest of you, about our zoning laws and what we can and can't approve. So I, I didn't mean to take over your time with your questions, but those were mine. I, I, the density is what I understand, but I, I guess I get concerned when we start saying about the type of people we would bring in and what what it would do to a neighborhood and its value. But I understand your concerns, and I, I we all read these letters, and I will tell you the amount of time our staff took to make sure we had all of these letters before we got here tonight. And they will go on our record in, in the documents, so everybody will see them. Thank you. <clears throat> um, the, the term of the rental for the campsites, are you daily, weekly, monthly? What is your anticipation? So our anticipation is not monthly. We have no desire to do this as a monthly or a seasonal rental uh, where people live there semi-permanently. Uh, we want this to be a vacation destination and one where people come, they enjoy the beach, the marina, the restaurants, and then they leave. Uh, I think that daily is okay, but I would probably lean towards several days up to a week. And you will have a management company that would be available for 24-hour calls or on duty and then calls or? Well, there would be some way that we would be available 24-7 the same way the restaurant is right now. I mean, if the back door to the restaurant opens or our security alarm goes off, I get a call, Dan gets a call, you know, we are reachable. Uh, and the same thing would happen for this. And that security alarm brings me to my next question r relative to surveillance cameras. Are you going to be establishing anything like that around the perimeter, within the, the compound area? Are you going to set anything like that up? Yeah, we have not discussed it yet. I am very open to it. We have security cameras at the restaurant already. It would be very easy to add several additional cameras, you know, for the ingress and egress, which we've actually thought about just looking at license plates. Uh, but we could have as many or as little as the city recommends or our neighbors want. I don't want cameras pointing at, you know, the street or the, the neighbor's houses, but if there was a reason to have them pointing interior towards, you know, our sites, I, I'm very open to that. Okay. It would be easy to add that uh, for what we're already doing. Do you currently get a lot of ATV traffic at those? I You do currently you get a lot of ATV traffic, yeah. don't you? Yeah. And, and then snowmobile. The winter, yeah, and the, and the boat landing's right there, correct? Correct. And our boat stuff. landing and the, the public boat landing. Boat landing are both right there, right? Yeah. Yeah, and they all have to I come mean, down go through. The, no, and you're welcome anytime, you but they yeah, all have to come I mean, down I, I through our parking lot Very familiar to get to the boat landings. So, yeah. yeah, all of that traffic is already coming to us through, you know, either cutting through the woods or coming on the, the road along the road. You know. And this particular parcel is zoned, Nick, uh, B1, B1, B1 commercial, mm -hmm. correct? In a, in a residential area. Yeah, I've got a comment. Uh, uh, everybody's come here very professionally, I really have to admit. And, yes. you know, really made some good points on yes. all sides. They have. Uh, 
Uh, we don't always see that, okay? I want to say yes. that. Yes. <laughs> so thank you for that. Yeah. Um, would there be a chance, uh, it seems that there's some open minds here to some degree, that you guys could sit down and talk about a little bit about what you want to do and what your goals are as homeowners and maybe come to a happy medium of some sort? I, I'm open to any conversation like that. I know Dan has been having conversations like that. Uh, you know, I've had people send me texts and Facebook messages already. My, I'm not hard to find, uh, and Dan's there all the time. Uh, yeah, the I worst case is, you know, I'd hate to see guys come out in fisty cups or something, but. Yeah, no, I, I and really, really what, what we would envision, you know, if, if I had my ideal here, this would be approved and we would be talking continuously going forward before during and after construction uh, to keep them happy you know I, I have no desire to alienate anybody in town I mean we're a service business we want all of your patronage going forward and so we don't want to make anyone unhappy but this is just a piece of the business plan yeah I mean I see that because these guys are close to your place your yep. customers um, you know yeah so your closest customers so yeah, to answer the question, we'd be happy to have that discussion, but- uh, Would the homeowners be open to that? <coughs> to sit down and discuss it a little further, you know, off-site, uh, and see if there's anything- But I think we have to, I do have a, a question, it's a nice suggestion, I do have a question for the chair. How many properties did you say are actually within the 200 feet? I think, Nick, there was three letters for the 200 feet. Mm -hmm. I think, I think uh, Taylor, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was- Oh, okay, my mistake. Yeah. I had another process too, uh, thought. Um, have you looked at any other options with the property? Uh, like one gentleman said here that it could be developed into uh, residential lots. And, yeah, uh, and actually we had asked about that prior to purchase and I don't believe that's uh, the preferred use of it from the zoning standpoint. Uh, highest and best use as we looked at it was for commercial use, for commercial development. That's what it's uh, And it was hotel, campgrounds. Uh, I think we could do boat storage there. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a number of uses. And actually, <coughs> this was the one that I felt would be the least headache for our neighbors and the least uh, impact on surrounding traffic, fire, everything. And I'd be most excited about this one. I think this would be a really good addition to the area and the business. I heard a comment from somebody say they wouldn't lose, use a lure, but I would think that you must have gotten requests from people that if you would put this here, you so would think that so they many would requests. because of ice, the fisheries and the drag races there. with the snowmobiles. And, and all, all summer. And I all mean, summer, right? If, if, if you look at what's yeah. been done in the past, during busy summer weekends, people would camp in the woods, just kind of, you know, we um, would kind of turn a blind eye to it. People parked their RVs all over the parking lot, all over the lawn out front along the lake. Uh, I don't love that. No, uh, this is and gonna. This contains it, it makes it controlled, and it's more mm -hmm. under your purview of saying, we approve what you're doing versus having a blind eye to what we've done in the past. Like doing illegally. I don't want to well, say illegally. illegally but it, it might be. I, <laughs> I wasn't owning at that point, and I'm not going <laughs> to throw stones. But, uh, but I think this, this is doing somewhat similar to what was done in the past, but in a more controlled, uh, approved environment. Um, oh, Tom, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Paul. Go ahead. No, please. Um, couple of things you said you hope to be open 12 months out of the year yes. I don't know of many campgrounds that can function 12 months out of the year because of the water and or the sewer how would you propose if these water lines are coming up out of the ground how would you supply water and or sewer service to the campers that get pulled in yeah perfect question so the answer to that is it may not be feasible to offer those services in the winter it would be based on how dry camping do. basically in the winter you'd still have dry electricity with electricity and with a restroom because we we have the a, okay our plan would be to have one room that's a pump room 
with restrooms and laundry. Uh, and so as a worst case, I think that would be the, the solution there. Uh, and I think that would be fine as long as we're renting it with people being aware of that, uh, there'd be no issue there. And then I guess this would probably go to you, the attorney. According to the town ordinance 316 commercial B, it says recreational vehicle parking. Aren't we mixing like a tiny home village with recreational vehicle parking? And if they are tiny home village mixed in with the recreational vehicle parking, would there be room tax on these units? Because typically in a campground, you are sleeping in the bed you provide. So there is no room tax. <laughs> Now, if he has units stationary on this property that he is renting, according to other plan commission meetings, I thought that you couldn't rent trailers because they couldn't be inspected by the Wood County Health Department as approved for HUD housing. So I guess that is one concern I have. And then when I look back to the petition for conditional use permit, it said short-term rental, and then that's crossed off and it says camping. What are we, short-term rental or are we camping? And if this is a campground, can there be short-term rental that's not, because I see nothing in here for the, like the rental homes where they have the room tax and all that pamphlets. Um, I think there's a, a mix here of two types of businesses half t a tiny home development which I guess this town has never encountered yet and a campground which there's a few of them I mean like she said Arrowhead I know there's other ones but I don't know if they're actually in the town of Rome so from a legal standpoint Nick are we a campground are we a 50% campground 50% tiny home and then how does that room tax affect because I thought we could not <coughs> VRBOs on things with wheels. Right. So, a uh, couple questions or a couple points to that, because uh, there are a number of questions <laughs> in your question. Right. Uh, is is the point that you know in in the application that was received, it, it's a campground, and and as you look at it though, uh, is it a campground with a number of of RV spots and cabins, which would be a little bit different than. Uh, what it sounds like are going to be on wheels and, and mobile, right? Because there are campgrounds that have cabins and, and RV spots. So uh, I would just maybe make a, a, a general comment to you in that if you were to, if you were to decide uh, to approve something like this, remember that you can place conditions in place that, uh, that re reflect certain use, you know, the, the specific use of that. Is it just RVs? Is it rustic camping? Is it cabins? What exactly is it? Where is the layout? Right? I mean, some of those things are going to be site plan, plan of operation. But to your point, Tom, it, you're, as, it, you're asking the right question because some of that is, is starting to, uh, I think, blur into that point of, of uh, whether it's just pulling in like a, a house on wheels to do a short-term rental. A house on wheels, there's no room tax applied to it because that person provided his own bed. You're not renting a bed. I thought that we could not do short-term rentals and campers in the town of Rome. That's so what I just, thought. Just a, a, a kind of a piece off of that. So, so we have short-term rentals in residential zoned areas, of course, right? No question, we've got a number of them on our agenda tonight. Uh, we also have business zoned property in this town that have cabins or you know or, or rentals that that have a little bit more density because they're business but they're operating uh, as short-term rentals or like kind of like uh, tourist rooming house uh, bed and breakfast kind of, of facilities uh, and they're absolutely paying room tax so uh, I, I would say that we do have business zoned districts that have cabins on them that do pay room tax. Eagles Nest is one that comes to mind that's zoned B1. But I guess I agree with the cabins. I guess my point was these 
are movable with wheels. We have nothing in the town of Roan currently that we allow people to rent that have wheels that are movable. I, I can help answer some of that too whenever yeah it, it can be that that can be a, a very legitimate concern and again it can be a condition mm -hmm. a part of your approval it, you don't have to approve this as black and white be very clear that this is listed as a conditional use if you do approve you can absolutely put conditions on and if they don't agree to the conditions and you have the right conditions right like legal conditions right you can't just put unreasonable conditions there are there are some certain metrics to that but if they don't agree to it then then you can deny the conditional use permit I'm not saying that you should put unrealistic conditions but if you have a concern with those type of units and there's maybe some alternate then maybe that's how we solve it but from you but from your legal standpoint if the lure owns these trailers and they are being rented would they qualify for right room tax being unit. added on because Mike what I'm having a hard time comprehending is nobody else in this town is allowed to rent a trailer with wheels on it even if they're willing to pay room tax you're not allowed to rent it if I bought a lot on 8th Avenue and I put on a beautiful fifth wheel I would not be able to rent it I would be denied from the town because it would not pass the HUD inspection aspect of it. And it's a trailer, mm -hmm. and they do not allow renting of trailers in the town. So without a foundation on these, I'm still considering these a trailer, and if they are DOT approved to go down the road, then they would have a license plate, which they would then pay the state of Wisconsin for to be able to travel with them. So the town's getting no room tax on these. The town's getting no assess value on these and this is the only place in the town of rome that we're going to allow trailer rentals that's i'm that's my opinion that's my comment go ahead laurie no i appreciate what you're saying and understand that but is it correct to also say we don't have a true site plan plan of operation yet so we're going to well, rule something out on i understand what he's saying but we don't have we do have a site plan, though. Well, we have a site plan, but... And he showed us what... Can you give us more clarification before? We don't want to rule I think that out completely yet because there's potential for that down the... Is that sure, I, I think I, I, what I would say is I am not sure that you have a really, really good campground map at this point to which you could make a decision based off of a site plan plan of yeah. operation, which I think the applicant has, has referenced himself. That he's going that that is kind of fluid in some ways uh, and, and can be updated um, so again if you're at the conditional use permit part of things there in in what they're proposing there can be some conditions that you place on it if there are concerns that you have with what has been uh, applied for and, and proposed to you and if that is a concern that could be potentially a condition potentially uh, that that may be you know adjusted in some way. It may be cabins, you know, some kind of cabin. I I don't know. Yeah. But I guess sitting up here at my very first plan commission meeting, <laughs> I'm trying to get a legal standpoint. We can't approve this site plan with the drawings he gave until the plan commission understands the effects of trailers with wheels on them and where they fall into short-term rental room tax categories and i guess those two big items i, I, I mean, think you're getting a little bit ahead of yourself yeah, as far as the I, site I plan, make sure plan that, of operation yeah, i want to make sure we're, we're clear here there's there's the conditional use permit and then there's a site plan plan of operation okay, okay? and in the conditional use permit part of it that's where you're at right now the, the site plan plan of operation is largely irrelevant if you're not approving that or approving it with conditions that totally modify things. And so that, you know, there, it's really going to depend on what your, the outcome of this is, but understand that those are two separate steps. They are two separate public hearings, as you see on the agenda, uh, but they are two separate decision points that this body would make. If I can make maybe a suggestion, um, 
<coughs> excuse me, this is a conditional use permit um, where we all have different ideas as far as what conditions we would like to see applied to this, this campground, taking into consideration if it is approved, what everybody in the audience had to say and our concerns as well. My suggestion would be at this point is that we, as a commission, have a separate meeting, come up with whatever conditions that we think are applicable to the conditional use permit, and then bring this conditional use permit back again so that we're all in agreement as to what conditions we think should apply. I don't know if that makes any sense to everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think we're ready to, to vote on this. I think it'll be delayed. I don't want to delay your efforts to get moving on your project, but again, there's a lot of concerns out there. We have a lot of concerns, and for us to put all our concerns together so that we can give you a list to see if, in fact, you can then achieve those concerns yeah. um, I think it makes more sense for us to again to have a separate meeting amongst ourselves to come up with a game plan so to speak can I ask one question? certainly Nick? Nick is there anything in current state law or town zoning that would would actually allow us to deny or say no to the conditional use permit sure sure so after uh, act 67 back in 2017 uh, there was a huge erosion on local controls and discretion uh, with conditional use permits, right? And, and we, as the town, updated our ordinance to have certain provisions to help protect us as far as what our ordinance requires in conditional use permits. Uh, that said... One second. Can you hear him in the back? Okay. Thank you. I am not saying that the town can't deny, okay? But I want to be very clear that if the town were to deny, the, uh, the, the guidance that's out there and, and the only success that's really out there is that uh, when it comes to a challenge, that if you are to deny, it needs to be based on substantial evidence, your ordinance, and that substantial evidence might come from studies. And it also, if those studies you know, present a concern, the uh, ability in, in uh, Act 67 is that the uh, applicant can work with the municipality to establish conditions. There's really a, a thought behind that as uh, conditions can come from those studies before denial. And if the applicant agrees <coughs> the conditions, you have a lot of harder time denying it and, and holding, uh, holding weight to a challenge. Uh, but so again, when you put uh, you know, it, to the point that you're saying, well, you know, can we deny it? It would have to be uh, based on, on pretty sound evidence and, and not, you know, not just speculation. There was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of erosion on uh, local control when Act 67 got passed. And there continues to be, correct? Yeah. And more legislation is coming forward, correct? Yes. So we can put conditions on this and we can delay this process and kick the can down the road, but it's likely going to be conditions that we should think about such as buffers such as lighting such as noise things that are already on the books that we currently have in place but things that we should seriously consider like density number of spots buffers for trash buffers for site mm -hmm. uh, just with a general note and, and it's in our ordinance too because again we we updated our ordinance to to come in line with act 67 when you're looking at conditions this would be kind of a plug if you are going to uh, get to that point uh, and, and, and kind of consider those. Make sure that the conditions need to be, you know, reasonable, related to the ordinance, uh, to the extent practicable, measurable, right? So they need, they make sure that conditions are not just gray and, and open to, you know, a big argument over interpretation. Those, that doesn't help us or them. Uh, so, uh, Again, you know, there's you take the concerns that that came up and and where there can be maybe a condition uh, associated with it, uh, you know, that can be put in place with your approval. That's why it's a conditional use. We're not talking about permitted, or we wouldn't have this conversation at all. We'd be right to site plan. We are at a conditional use. There can be conditions placed on that. To the comments that have been made, some of those conditions can relate to the type of structures that are being placed, the location of those structures, which I think we've heard. 
uh, references to in, in uh, uh, Lori's comments and, and the applicant's comments. So I, I think the, the, you know, the point here is, is just be aware that the conditions are things that you can put on your approval if you decide to approve. Um, and, and those conditions are really important. I have been quiet way too long. <laughs> Go ahead. I know. So we need substantial evidence to prevail if we were to deny this permit, correct? Yes. Substantial evidence would mean that if it's the health, welfare, and well-being of the subdivision and all these people that are here that feel that this would harm them, we need substantial evidence and not, unfortunately, feelings that this is going to occur. And hence my question with regard to the actual facts behind the reduction in property values. We need the actual facts. And then I really appreciated, um, I'm sorry, I forgot your last name. Uh, Andy, I think is your first what? name. I appreciated your letter because of the fact that you've had prior um, um, experience with regard to conditional use permits. With regard to traffic patterns, and I'm not sure if the Department of Transportation would help us out on any kind of a, um, a verifiable higher incident of traffic on that property or in, in, in ingress and egress, <coughs> we have to have substantial evidence and that's what in order for us to deny the permit that's what we need to have is that my understanding yes particularly on those uh, what so when you say public health safety and welfare Which, those are what I would call general standards correct can base them on general standards the more you do that the more you need substantial evidence absolutely But nonetheless, we would, if, if that is a concern and that's a feeling that this is going to happen, we need substantial evidence to verify that this ha is happening. That's Act 67. Sorry. And you already know uh, you get more traffic there with events. You're already getting Yeah, that. I mean, that's not every weekend of the day. No, but it's, an I event's going to bring in an extra 500 to 750 with, with people. 25 sites. Versus 25 extra cars. Yeah, 25 maybe extra every cars. single day if I'm lucky. But, but your events with campers held about 25 people on those campsites. Uh, 25 cars would not be additional. So, Mr. Uh, Chairman, I think we have I, I two options. Say, I think, so. On the events, there was about Mr. 25 Chairman. campsites, I would guess. Well, you okay, well, you want to tell you what, why don't you. Uh, you're going to have concerns, obviously. You're going to think of stuff as, as the night goes on. Um, depending on what we do up here, maybe voice your additional concerns. Something that you haven't already spoken about directly to, to Mark. Um, if there's something that hasn't been brought up by any of the folks in the audience here, I'm sure we'd be glad to hear it. Um, but at this point, we need to discuss with the, with the proposed applicant here as far as the campground. Um, our ideas, our thoughts, our concerns. We've heard yours. We have all your letters. Um, I don't want to cut you off, obviously, you know, um, or you as well, sir. I'd like to make just one follow up. Okay, go ahead, certainly. Um, I agree with everything that has been said. Title 67 makes it significantly more challenging. I'm on a planning commission board in my home municipality. I have been for 10 years. You do need a substantial finding of fact. I completely understand that. But that's also why I crafted the letter that I did. We have an updated ordinance, and we have tests that I believe that this project fails. One of them would be on density. It is bad government planning to go from low density to high density. Going to one house per acre to eight per acre is not good planning standards. Okay, so the density argument <coughs> is there. 
the valuation, I agree. Without, subs I think it's there, but without substantiation, how do you use it? it? It's difficult. But we also have a zoning code that talks about neighborhood character. And I think you can make a substantial finding of fact based on the overall turnout and the number of objections that the residents are saying this will change the neighborhood character. This is not close. This is not a 60-40. You have the vast majority of neighbors that have weighed in and said this will affect them. That is substan That is a finding of fact that you could base your decision on. Okay. Uh, certainly. Um, I, again, I'm, I'm not the lawyer in the room, like, or, or I'm not a planning commission like all these others, but there is a house directly across from this site that is up for sale currently for $850,000. I would just ask each of you on the committee, would you pay eight fifty dollars for that house without a campground next to it, or would you pay more with the campground next to it, or less? Because to me, that's, that's as much fact as you need as to whether or not that's going to increase or decrease the property values property around. Thank you. And Mr. Peterson, we do have your letter that we looked at already, but it'll be considered again. Thanks. So again, my suggestion would be is that we have a, as a commission a separate meeting to discuss all our conditions if this was to get approved. <coughs> she, we could possibly do it this month sometime because she leaves at the end of the month. Um, question? Go ahead. That's not me. This decision can't be based on, maybe I've misunderstood this. It must be based on substantial evidence and it can't be based on feelings. Correct. For us to deny his conditional use permit cannot be based on feelings. The, the, the people in this room and the multiple letters of all the signatures that you got that express feelings, that weighs nothing? According to state law. Well, no, uh, most of the letters were talking about, you know, your concerns of, of what you would like, Mark, uh, to, to address if he were allowed this campsite. And um, those are things that we will be able to put in our conditional use permit, like loud noise, campfires, um, surveillance, um, all different kinds of conditions, a lot of them, that we could put on the conditional use permit. To deny him the permit, we have to have proof that these things, sub substantial evidence that this is going to happen or has occurred that we can prove is detrimental to the health and welfare and, um, uh, and um, is against our zoning ordinances. We just can't say, well, this will or this could, this might. We have to have verifiable proof proof that it will redu re reduce the property values by a certain percentage point. Our tax base is going to go down. Uh, we will um, have additional challenges with regard to um, vandalism in the neighborhoods because of this campground. And, and these are your concerns, and I understand that, but we just can't say well we think this is going to happen we need to have verifiable or substantial evidence I did email him and tell him that it would be a while so it might be but I told him it would be a while and he knows we'd be calling him so okay. so I have one more comment if I can from the negotiation standpoint you got six acres here, and from what I see, there's several different ways to go about this. You seem open-minded with regard to density and things like that. Um, I don't know if the folks out here are open-minded at all to any ideas along those lines, but you may discuss it, and maybe there's a happy medium between. Um, Mike, I always, Mike. yeah, I always like to think <coughs> that there is. That maybe there's somewhere. Maybe it's less density. Maybe it's a fence or a high-end. I think but a fence would be uglier than trees. Yeah, than right. trees. Yeah. But right. I hear you. Yeah. I hear your point. Yeah, yeah. I hear a good point. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was part of the idea of having the wheels. Is if we say, well, it doesn't work as well over here, we can move the units. You know, it's not trying to skirt <coughs> room tax. Uh, I, I assume we would be paying a room tax. No, I'm not. 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 I'm
Those 18 stalls that you have set up for the mini homes or park models, yes. that's increasing the density because they're really close together. If you eliminate or think about eliminating those and either have two more RV stalls or actually build a couple cabins in some of that area, that might that would reduce the density that you're having right now with all those mini, mini homes. Yeah, I mean, and that's that was, something I'd be open to hearing. Mark, that was actually part of, I don't know, I mainly talked to Dan through all this as far as all this paperwork, and a lot of this was subject to change as far as the density of each place being so close together. Yeah. Um, that, like he said, movable, we can have them in different areas than just yeah. everybody together. Yeah. And we did... I mean, we've already discussed that, you know, a unit might fall off here because of, uh, you know, how the, the septic or where the pump house or <coughs> the bathrooms might sit. Or we spoke with the fire marshal and he wanted the extra um, ingress, egress road on the east side of the lot. And that may eliminate one pad. So right now we've been asking for 35. That's the most we'd want in the you know, a perfect world, but it may end up being fewer. Uh, as, as we get this going forward. And you may have a variety of different ways to enter that might help out as well. So the traffic doesn't come down past homes. I, you know, I can see, see a yeah, as of, of different options. As of right now, what the fire marshal had wanted was to only have the one ingress egress at our parking lot side uh, and have at least a second lane where we would have a cut into the road uh, on the other side of the property so the fire truck wouldn't have to come all the way around. They could come straight in. But uh, it sounded like they would prefer that to be kind of chained off most of the time, yeah. except for emergency vehicles. But yeah. you're correct. There's there's potentially ways we could adjust the flow and adjust uh, where the units are. Yeah, to let everybody happy to some degree. That would be a great explanation. Ma'am? Oh, Ma'am? Basically, we're just going on the, the information that we the town has and act upon an Act 67, and I don't believe it has anything to do with any any of the wildlife or anything that you're experiencing by your property. Unless the DNR has done a study that can provide us with a study of some sort saying that something like this would impact the wildlife in the area. The only thing they weighed in on was the watershed, and we have some uh, two or ten <coughs> Am I misunderstanding the use regulations in 360-9 uh, with regard to um, camping? It says in any district which allows camping, which B1 would if the conditional use permit is granted, a camping unit shall remain mobile, ergo wheels left on and no skirting, have a current license in self-containment facilities. So. It would have to be a mobile. Unless you were putting cabins or something. Again, that's my point is, you know, it, there's not a preclusion of putting some kind of cabins or something on a <coughs> campground, you know. So we're now talking about, you know, outside and, you know, on, on a non B1 district. But I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying that, <coughs> you know, to, to uh, previous comment, that there would be other options there if the concern is the, the mobility of those units. I, I think we're hearing the applicants say that the mobility was a, uh, there was reason behind the mobility, right? And, and actually that was, uh, in, in their mind, it sounded like a, a you know, kind of a concession to be able to, uh, to move them if, if needed. But my point is if there was a cabin or, or some kind of way that you could uh, propose the location uh, of some of those uh, permanent and, and not permanent spots that maybe have lesser impact on density, that would be an option. Under our zoning, would we allow a, a cabin in a camping 
in B1 with a campground? Yes. I, I would say yes. You would? Okay. Permanent yeah. structure in a campground? Yeah. Yeah. Dan and zoning permanent. like it's not <coughs> that was actually a resort is a permitted use in B1. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, it, you're, you're finding the line there, right? In in this, but yes, it would be allowed to have a permanent structure if if they were open to that. I, I again, I don't know the conversations they had with our zoning administrator, but the the concerns tonight that were raised might speak to potentially a design or or a plan that has maybe those kind of structures rather than uh, such a mobile. Again, they're options. I'm not making the recommendation, just saying that they're options. Point of clarification, I just asked it. Um, when does Mark see the letters and the comments? I'm not, I assume he is not present right now, correct? We will be able to supply him with a copy before he leaves tonight. Oh, I think there's an underappreciation of the magnitude. I understand that, yep. sure. If he wanted to get the letters that they um, had done, they would have to be redacted um, because that would have all of their personal information. Um, so I had actually said, because um, Jerry had posed that question, okay. if they, um, if Mark and Dan would get those letters. Um, so I said that they would have to be redacted first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Unless everyone is okay with their personal information on there. <laughs> Because, I mean, that has all of their addresses and their email addresses. Yep. So, I mean, that would be up, totally up to everybody that supplied the letters. So, otherwise, I would have to go through and redact everything. Okay. I'm good because Mark's going to give me his number so I can call him 24-7. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. That's <laughs> right. You can have it. I don't care. Dan's got my card. My number's yeah. on it. So, commissioners, are do we kind of have been in agreement that we should have a, a separate meeting to come up with possible conditions? Uh, for this CUP if it's approved? Yes. Or do we want to just delay it for a month and give Mark the chance to go back and re revisit the plan he's got to address some of these issues and come back with it? Well, I think plan. if we give him the, the conditions that we think would be appropriate for this, then he could be given the conditions and then be able to come back okay. with an idea. That's just my... <coughs> what? I agree with the chair. He needs some conditions and ideas from us before he can even yeah. redo his plan. Yeah, if you can, you know, give, a, what I was hearing is you could give a conditional use approval saying here's what we would approve if you meet these Correct. metrics. And then I can change things to Correct. to make it. Well, and you have to agree to the approvals as well. You'll have to sign right. the findings of fact or find yeah. that you agree to everything that we would propose if we agree, if we approve. Yeah. The longer we push this off and then there's public hearings, that costs more money for him, for us. I mean, question I had related to that I'm, I'm happy for you to delay it if that's what you need to do uh, if, if am I correct in it that you could approve it today if that's what you all chose to do you could approve it today and say we will be putting stipulations on it no we would have to put the stipulations in first to see if you could okay. meet our our so conditions before you would correct yep. I'm just uh, trying to think yeah, process. I'm thinking that we would be able to possibly put together a meeting for a, for the commission sometime in the next two weeks. Um, Diana's going to be leaving and going out of town, so that we would like her input as well. So sometime within the next two weeks, we could probably have it together and then give it to Taylor, and Taylor could uh, contact you. And, and would we come back to this meeting? Today? Yes, right, Nick? There would be another? It would be an open meeting, yeah. It'd just post it. It wouldn't have to be a public hearing because this is the public, public hearing. hearing. Okay. Everybody agree? Can I move on to another? Sir? So I understand that you have some time on your side of the fence. What can we do on our side in the meantime? Well, that would be up to you folks. I don't know if you can have another meeting amongst yourselves or whatever, but, you know, we have a lot of your thoughts on paper. needs to be provided. What, what am I trying to ask here, Andy? And what's the 
what's the mechanism for the feedback of this group back to you? They're saying if there's documentation and revenue, I just heard from Ennis at the end of the public comment period, which I think is hard to believe, this is being tabled, there should be an opportunity for us to come back to add elements. Oh, yeah, there would be another public meeting to, to address our conditions that we would want applied to the campground. We'd have an opportunity to speak. Certainly. Okay. Yep. Okay, uh, anything else? I, I have a question. Okay. And Chairman, if it's not the right question, say don't answer. I, um, <laughs> if he were standing up here today and proposing a 36 unit condominium project, would this room be filled? Is it the campground that's bothering these homeowners and these condos and these homes? Or is it trying to keep the six acre parcel natural? Um, if he was up here proposing a 36 unit condominium development, which is just about what he's proposing with campers, and they sold for four or 500,000 a piece, would any of, would we have an empty room tonight or would, would we have a full room tonight? I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. Okay. The train's in the park that makes me nervous with no supervision. That fits the neighborhood. Okay, then what we'll do is uh, we'll pick a date. We'll again review all your, your letters. If uh, Mark wants to get a copy of all the letters or emails, it's Happy to review them. Um, contact Taylor and uh, she'll be able to do whatever she needs to do to make them available to you. Um, and then before we leave tonight, we'll pick a meeting date for amongst ourselves and uh, proceed from there. Okay? Yes, ma'am. We'd be happy to, and you know, not only, I mean, I think Dan has mentioned multiple times before to anybody that stops in, uh, we're happy to talk both about yeah, this, but like, also know. anything else, you know, because we can be loud and we do have traffic and, you know, it's a business. Uh, yeah, but just, you know, walking in and just sitting down and talking to 100%, you about your totally fine. No, I hear what really you're saying. Yeah. On previous commissions that I've been on, that's actually been a requirement that we've asked sometimes, is for uh, the owner to meet with the local neighborhood first and possibly revise the proposal for your consideration. Okay. Everybody's advantage. Exactly. Okay. Um, once we have our meeting, come up with our, our conditions, we will, I'm assuming, may probably have this available for next month. I would think, maybe. I'm, I'm getting the, the stare. Well, uh, didn't you just say that we were going to meet maybe in the next two weeks? Right. But I'm talking about having the meeting, the next planning commission meeting for March, having this available for reconsideration then. I think that question is confusing me. Okay, my, my, my intent for a meeting would just be for us to come up with conditions for the campground. And, and, and then to actually have action? Well, and then once we determine what our conditions were, is then to bring those forward at the next Planning Commission meeting. Well, that, that's all of your decision to make. But, yeah. And this is just a public hearing section, so you'll be on it on the All right, anything else from the commissioners? I would say that if they get together and they come to something, they should let us know what it let is. Let us know so that we're not but having a private meeting and then presenting, and then we find out that they came to a different compromise that we should have considered. Exactly. So if something comes out of what the community meeting, the <coughs> community being the condos and the barn, 
everybody if there's something that we should know please get it to the zoning lady and that we can Taylor. Taylor. <laughs> Taylor. <laughs> Maybe within the next two weeks. Does that make sense? Within well, the next two weeks? Sure. Sometime okay. by the end of the month, maybe. Yep. I don't know how this works. Do we have access to Nick? No. No, you would have to go through Taylor. The the She's our support, support specialist for the zoning department, and then she would be able to contact Nick with whatever the issue would be. No? He's the town no, attorney. He's the town attorney. Right. What would you need? Are you talking about a specific code or anything that the town has? What do you need? Well, I, I, I'm, you know, this is some of these terms are kind of brand new to me. Substantial evidence we need to find, you know. No, no and you would need to retain a, your private attorney for that. Yeah. If there's a question that is if, for clarification of, of our, our code, code, then the zoning department would be the appropriate contact. Correct. Right. If the zoning department has a question regarding that interpretation, then right. that usually she would go to Nick. That's, right. that's pretty common protocol, but if there's a right. question about uh, other legal pieces that, that would be maybe beyond that, uh, they would be uh, encouraged to, to retain but counsel. But let's or, also or clarify, consultant. though, just like she went to a lot of work this week with how many different, we can't have the entire residents of the entire condo association calling Taylor every day for legal advice, correct? None of this would be legal advice. It would be like an right. interpretation question on our code. So if they could maybe send it to one person, it should be questions, something like that. But again, How just questions on our code would be the only thing that Taylor would have to respond to. And if she didn't have the answer, then go to Nick. So if you had questions about other things, sir, you probably have to. I don't know if your associations have an attorney or whatever. Uh, I had a phone call placed to Taylor. I never got a return call. I was out all last week, Tuesday through Friday, with Influenza A. Um, I've done my best to reply to everything that I did with emails. I did print out all the emails and letters that I did receive. Um, I respect that. Okay. All right. Um, we'll get back to you. Yeah. Okay. We're moving on to the next point. Or well, we can't. We can't really do your state plan and plan of operation until we have a conditional use permit issued if that's the case so okay yeah. thank you so items b and c would then be is the right tabled until the next meeting or well, correct me did so you had uh, the seven b you had the public hearing so okay uh, if you're not going to have the public hearing on c because of all right. the reasons you discussed then you would uh, move to D. Okay. And thank you everyone for coming in. It's uh, greatly appreciated that we have that kind of people in the community that are concerned about things. We really appreciate that. I know probably the rest of you are going to want to leave because uh, feel free. You're not going to interrupt us. Now we're going into short term rentals, and that's really. I assume we have assurance that items 12 and 13 will be tabled? Correct. Um, don't they will be they will be acted upon as far as number number uh, twelve being moved to a few, to the next agenda and same with thirteen. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All right. Item 7D, consideration of the issuance of conditional use permit for the following purpose, the short-term rental at the property located at 429 10th Avenue, owned by Joseph Bellaccio, doing business as Rome Recovery LLC, located in the southwest one quarter, northwest one quarter, section 22, town 20 north, range 6 east, town of Rome, Adams County, Wisconsin, parcel number of 30-871. Nick. Joseph Pelosio, DBA, uh, or doing business as Rome Dick Recovery LLC, has submitted a short term rental license application and conditional use permit uh, for the property located at 429 10th Avenue, requesting use for the 2023 2024 season that ends June 30th, 2024. 
Letters were sent to six property owners within 200 feet of the affected property. The applicant has completed all license requirements and crew looting the property manager <laughs> within 30, 25 miles uh, on record with the town. The plan commission places conditions on conditional use permits issued to, for short-term rentals that will set maximum occupancy and maximum number of vehicles allowed on the property based on the standards found in town code chapter 234-61. Staff recommends a maximum occupancy of four, maximum vehicles of two, to be parked on hard surfaces, not on the lawn grass at the property. Uh, please also note on this one that the fire department inspection report uh, included. Uh, staff uh, further recommends a sign off by the applicant, an associated acknowledgement letter from the insurance provider that they are aware of a low maintenance road servicing the lot and possible access effects or delays on emergency services. <laughs> my name's Wayne Ashenberg. Okay. And I and my boys have the land that surrounds Joe. And I found the very last hour and a half very interesting. Because when you talk about fact versus feelings, the fact is those zoning was residential. I looked at a house down in that area considered building. And I have strong feelings about the owners of that property. Why don't we just stick to what your topic is here as far as your short-term okay, rental? I have okay. the same concern okay. about my property. Okay. It's not a residential area. When I bought that property, it was for the woods, for the animals, the outdoors. When I gave it to my sons, when my wife passed away, same thing. Let's maintain it and continue to have a good time with our entire hunting group and my grandchildren. So all of a sudden, zoning is gonna change. No, the facts are the zoning was there. Now if I didn't have a good relationship with Joe, I would really be fighting this. But Joe and I have got along very well. We've had three hour and a half discussions. Joe has said, what are your concerns? My concerns are exactly what these people are saying. It started with fire. That was the Big Flats fire. I was planting trees that day with my sons, my grandchildren. We were putting up trees. Fire is a concern. I said, Joe, you got people coming in there? And how did the fire start with Big Flats? People didn't know what to do with a campfire. And Joe does not have a set pit. So we talked about it. He said, will you help me? And I said, yeah, let's put in something confined. My second concern with Joe was <laughs> trespassing. It's going on all over, and they're dumping garbage all over. Joe and I decided, let's put up more signs. He's going to let me on his property. We'll walk up. We'll put more signs. Joe has carefully, very carefully, used gunfire. I can buy that. However, conditional permit for people coming up from other areas into the woods opens up firearm danger, in my opinion. I've already had to carry and tell people on my property, oh, they said, the police department said we could come here. No, you can't. Where'd you come in? Well, there's a gate right there. They said we could come in the gate. No, you can't. Please leave. It's getting out of hand with trespassing and garbage dumped all over. The last item, really, I go back to, it was never zoned residential. For use. You said earlier we are only looking at residential property. Now, I'm going to say this. I'll work with Joe. If you approve this, I like him. He's a good guy. I trust him. But we have an understanding, Joe and I, any of these areas from fire to increase trespassing to guns to garbage, he and I will take care of it. And we will. So I want Town of Rome, you guys, to know we're not going to fool around with this. 
You know, you gotta have conditions. I heard, well, you gotta prove it. What do you want, somebody shot? Do you want garbage on your front steps, on your land? Do you want trespassers coming into your house? I don't, and I don't think you do either. So, that's my comments. I, I feel very bad for the people here. They bought, they had property, built nice houses, paying high taxes. Well, yeah, but we might change it. I feel for the young man with the lure. He's a businessman. We need more of them in our country today. Okay. Um, are you, um, did you put your name or an address on the paper up there? Yes, I did. Okay, thank you so much. Yep. Is Joe here? Yes. Oh, My oh. name is Joseph Lucio. Okay. I am the person applying for the conditional use permit okay. at 429 South 10th Avenue. My main residence is 370 Hartford Court, which is approximately a mile and a half long walk to the subject property. Okay. So I am super proud, I'm super pumped, excited to be here today, especially coming after that long discussion. <laughs> Hope not to make mine a little bit simpler, but yes, Wayne has been an awesome influence in getting neighborhood uh, neighbors involved. He brought up, actually you didn't throw the garbage at me before Wayne, but these are items of interest, fire, gun, trespassing, and the trash that I want to address properly. Mikasa's to Casa, he's invited to my house, um, on my property, and I think I really am like pumped because this is a super awesome rural residence. That's the main thing. This is a rural as residence. We have golf courses, we have lake houses, we have houses and subdivisions, not many rural residents that we have on 40 gorgeous acres surrounded by some other awesome property. Rural Wisconsin is beautiful. Why? Let's show it. And to the topper of it is, it's also handicapped accessible. Okay. Um, what What do you want to tell us about the property or your plans for the rental if it's approved? Uh... So you know what, my main goal of who I want to appeal to would be the handicapped people that don't have a rural residence. Lake houses, most of these places do not have a handicap wrap. They don't have a handicap shower. The first handicapped person, a young man named BJ, that I had at my, at 429 10th Avenue, was just thrilled with it. He was able to get in the place, use the bathroom, sit on a screen porch in a rural setting. These are the persons, that's the people that I'm trying to go to. I want to keep my neighbors happy. I want Rome to be just the most awesome place that I've been coming up here since 1972. And I want to keep it where my kids and their kids want to keep on coming up. So I think retaining this 40 acres with all the land around it, it's just a fantastic um, showing, show place for the town of Rome and of course myself. Okay, um, I have a question then. Um, your property just at 429 10th is 40 acres? That is correct. Okay, I, um, and I, the zoning then is R4 I see on the, on the application. Um, the, one of the things that concerned me was the, the driveway access. It's gonna come in off of 10th Avenue, right? That kind of cool. go up through the grass to the, to the hill by the, by the house? There is a gravel driveway going from 10th Avenue to the house as well as a auxiliary driveway further towards further east uh, south of there the main driveway is a hard packed gravel surface that's had um, delivery trucks come through there that's had gravel drop through there and of course my snow plow okay questions go ahead um, the driveway seems to have like a turnaround part of it is a grass kind of an area the main driveway goes up to the house by the screen porch there, by the ramp? That is correct. The main part of the driveway goes directly in front of the house. There is also gravel parking west of the house. And then there is a 
uh, grass loop that goes around, if need be, to turn around a bigger truck or something of that nature. I saw some, uh, like, mobile homes or something. I don't know if that's to the south. Those are actually... Uh, uh, I have is that part too. of the prop? That Pardon is, me? Yes, that is part of the property, and I have some snowmobile trailers and ATVs. Okay. And you intend to advertise it as a uh, handicap facility for people? Yes. Okay. Mr. Chairman, if I could, just Please. because I, it, it, it relates to what I had read all over the report. Right. Now, I do see that. <coughs> so with all that in mind, uh, one thing that we did receive feedback on, as I had noted in the report from the fire department, was that this is a kind of a, a low-maintenance road and that could have impacts on access. Uh, are there concerns that you have, or are you are you okay with uh, what was suggested as as the acknowledgement and and uh, you know and, and sign off of uh, the idea that this is low maintenance road and it may have some delays uh, for uh, you know for response time you know because of that in, in certain situations. Of course, that brings up a concern. Um, there are two. There's the Tenth Avenue, or there's a Ninth Avenue to get into it. With the additional driveway, be it not perfected, but it does have another option that. So, um, of course, my main goal is to advertise it as a rural residence. Um, that uh, that is, of course, off the grid, and it will be noted that that will be a thousand feet off a plowed road because the fact is sometimes that road doesn't get plowed and I need a four-wheel drive to get back there. So with that said, the truth of advertising it, that would have to be inclusive in there or I, I feel that that would be a deceptive practice on my half if somebody couldn't drive back there with a foot of snow in there. It's one of the last roads to get plowed. It's just a gorgeous area back there. And like I said, it's just gonna be a showcase for the town of Rome. You had just mentioned Ninth Avenue. Uh, that the, is it anywhere near your property? So there is like you, you have a county forest directly to the east of you. So Ninth Avenue, Tenth Avenue, goes south off of Apache. Right. Then it loops east, and then Ninth Avenue. Correct. Uh, or Ninth Drive. The low maintenance roads you're talking low about. Low maintenance road. Road. Correct. Okay, now I understand. Actually, I would like to add it. I've had the property for quite a few years um, with all the, the intentions of at least letting it be used by handicapped people. Um, that's why it was built in a fashion it was. I haven't really had the time to manage and monitor it. I'm recently retired, and now is the time that I will be able to not only manage it, but monitor it, the path around the lot, is two and a half miles. That's my walking path. <coughs> my residence, once again, is less than a mile and a half from there. So, so you would be the property manager then for the rental property? That is correct, sir. Okay. And you live up here year long, year round? I live up here. I'm not going to say year long, but I live up here 90 percent of the time. And I'm going on vacation next week. I won't be here, but you would have to be here though any time the property would be rented. Correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. Absolutely. So you won't be renting it out when you're gone. I, I'm, I'm 63 years old. I don't need to build another ski hill or, or uh, trailer park. I'm happy with my 40 acres. I'm happy what I have. I'm happy with my life in Rome, and I'm not going to turn it into a development. It's, it is a rural residence. That's the way I'd like to keep it. I will be here as much as I can, and I have been here quite a bit. But when you're, what I'm asked was, if you're not here, like if you're on vacation not or you're renting. gone, you will not be renting the property. Mm, absolutely else. not. I can't monitor it. That's my that's the my crown jewel and there is no way that I'm going to cut it loose if I wanted to do that I would have gotten cottage keepers or another place to do it six okay. years ago sounds good okay. is there anybody else here that would like to speak either in, uh, in favor or against this conditional <coughs> permit? okay thank you sir thank you item E consideration of the issuance of condition use permit for the following purpose short-term rental at the property located at 1314 Bogey Trail, 
owned by Bogey Trail LLC, also described as Lot 8 of Bogey Addition to Lake Arrowhead, located in the southeast one quarter, northeast one quarter, Section 19, Town 20 North, Range 6 East, Town of Rome, Adams County, Wisconsin, parcel number of 30-2909-507. Nick. I'm going to give you the abridged, uh, which I'm sure you'll all appreciate because we're going to hear these a few times. Uh, Bogey Trail LLC has submitted a short-term rental license application and conditional use permit for their property located at 1314 Bogey Trail, requesting use for 2023-2024 season that ends June 30th, 2024. Letters were sent to 10 property owners within 200 feet of the affected property. Staff recommends a maximum occupancy of 11, maximum vehicles of 5 to be parked on hard surfaces, not on long grass at the property. And uh, the applicant has completed all license requirements, including a property manager within 25 miles and on record with the town. Okay. Um, and you will see in your packet that um, we did receive an email um, from the property owner that their property manager will be representing them here tonight. And that's this young lady. Yep. I think you've heard my spiel a couple times. We I have. I don't really have much to say, so just if you have questions for me. Any commissioner questions on this particular property? Mm -hmm. Anybody in the audience have anything that they want to say either for or against the property of the conditional use permit? And we're pretty sure we can park five vehicles there, huh? We're, yeah. Yeah, that's big. It looks just like a circle yeah. around to me. Right. It's okay. pretty wide. Though. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. IMF, can this consideration of the issuance of a conditional use permit for the following purpose, the short-term rental of the property located at 277, or I'm sorry, 227 Derby Court, owned by Amanda and Billy Van Wee, doing business as BAV Camelot LLC, also described as Lot 51 of Dundee Addition to Lake Camelot, located in the northwest one quarter, southwest one quarter, section 10, town 20 north, range 6 east, town of Rome, Adams County, Wisconsin, parcel number 30 5378. Nick. Amanda and Billy Van Wee, doing business as BAV Camelot LLC, have submitted a short-term rental license application and conditional use permit for the property located at 227 Derby Court, requesting use for the 2023-24 season that ends June 30th, 2024. Letters were sent to nine property owners within 200 feet of the property. Uh, staff recommend a maximum occupancy of eight, maximum vehicles of four to be parked on hard surfaces, not on lawn grass at the property. And the applicant has completed all license requirements, including a property manager within 25 miles of uh, the town and on record with the town. Good evening. How are we doing? Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you Mr. Van Wee? I am. What would you want to tell us about what you have planned for the property? Yeah, uh, Stephanie is also, the, she's the property manager on okay. it, so you guys are familiar with her. Um, we've lived there a couple of years. We ended up buying the house next door. Thought it'd be a good opportunity to put this in the rental pool um, and living next door. We can kind of keep an eye on things. Okay. Um, Nick, I noticed on the front of the application that there was uh, the total area of the property was 0. .00. Um, I don't know if that makes a, a difference on the application. That can be corrected and, okay. and placed on the file. I got you. Okay. Um, and do we just have, do we have to stay indefinite as far as the request for renewal, or can we just go with the phrase that's on the application? You can ask the applicant. Yeah, you can. The findings of fact, I think, spell out the term and. and if you want, otherwise you can adopt the findings of Okay, I understand. It says indefinite in the findings. Okay. Commissioners, any questions for this uh, gentleman? None. Okay, thank you, sir. And then in the spirit of Sand Valley, the solution for the campground would be another 18 holes called Mama Bears. <laughs> I was just throw that out there. If you know <laughs> okay, uh, stick around. Yeah, you know, you have to sign some documents when we're done here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Item G, consideration of the issuance of a conditional use permit for the following purpose. A short-term rental at the property located at 1477 Rapids Trail, owned by Shanna and Benjamin Olson, also described as Lot 1 of CSM 6050, also known as Lots 8 and 9 of Red Cloud Edition to Lake Arrowhead, located in the northwest one quarter, southwest one quarter, section 12, 20, town 20 north, range 5 east, town of Rome, Adams County, Wisconsin, Parcel number 30-4074-10. Nick. 
Shannon and Benjamin Olson have submitted a short-term rental license application and conditional use permit for the property located at 1477 Rapids Trail, requesting use for the 2023-24 season that ends June 30th, 2024. Letters were sent to 12 property owners within 200 feet of the affected property. Staff recommend a maximum occupancy of 16, maximum vehicles of 8, to be parked on hard surfaces, not on long grass of the property. And the applicant has completed all license <coughs> requirements, including the property manager, within 25 miles on record with the town. Okay. Are you Shanna? Yep, Shanna. Shanna? Um, anything you want to tell us about what your plans are? Well, uh, my husband and I come from the design and construction background, so we'll be primarily marketing towards the design community. Um, folks who will come up from Sand Valley, bring um, money to the area, um, and be good, you know, residents and, and support the community. And obviously there's a property manager within the 25 mile radius? Yes, sir. Okay. 17 miles. Okay, excellent. <laughs> Just lucky. Uh, commissioners, any questions for this young lady? This is how many, how many, uh, 16? 16. 16. Yes, 16. although I believe we're probably going to cap it at 14. 14. And then um, it has come to my attention personally from people that have properties that have more than four or eight people when you get to 10, 12, 14, there seem to be a few more issues with regard to outdoor parties and are you going to have specific? Oh yeah, you should okay. see all the list of uh, regulations we put on it for ourselves and for any renters. Okay. We likewise have concerns about that as well. So uh, for example, we have exterior security cameras just to make sure that things don't get out of hand. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Nope. Any other questions, commissioners? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. 7H, consideration of the issuance of a conditional use permit for the following purpose. The short-term rental at the property located at 1099 South Archer's Way, owned by Brian and Kimberly Jackson. Also described as Lot 5 of Deer Lodge Assessor's Plot to Lake Sherwood. Located in the northeast one quarter, southwest one quarter, section 16, town 20 north, range 6 east. Town of Rome, Adams County, Wisconsin, with a parcel number of 030-1971. Nick. Brian and Kimberly Jackson have submitted a short-term rental license application and conditional use permit for the property located at 1099 South Archer's Way, requesting use for the 2023-24 season that ends June 30th, 2024. Letters were sent to 11 property owners within 200 feet of the affected property. Staff recommend a maximum occupancy of eight, maximum vehicles of four to be parked on hard surfaces, not on long grass at the property. Uh, the applicant has completed all license requirements, including a property manager within 25 miles and on record with the town. Okay. Are you Brian? I am. Fire away, Brian. Well, my wife and I purchased this property about three, four years ago. We've been camping on it every summer for, since then. Uh, for the last year, we've been building a house. We plan to spend as much time out here as we can. And when we're not here, uh, we're going to rent it out. Okay. Is there anybody in the audience that wants to speak for or against this conditional use permit? Okay, commissioners, any questions on this one? No. no. Thank you, Brian. It, oh, oh, I'm sorry. You, you didn't speak up fast <laughs> enough. Okay. So this, look, this looks like it's a newer property, brand new. Yes, brand new house. And all construction is completed? Yep. Okay. A little bit of landscaping, but that's it. Okay. It's, when I had dro drove past, it looked like there were construction vehicles in the driveway, and I was just wondering if they were touch-up carpenters. Well, that might have been my neighbor's house, because there is a new house going a couple doors down from me, well, so they might have been. 1099. Yep, that's the one. Very pretty. Okay. Good. Yep. Okay. <coughs> Thank you, Brian. Number eight, close the public hearing. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. Second. Okay, now I'm confused. <laughs> I'll make a motion to end okay. public hearing. Okay. Motion by Tom, seconded by Paul to close the public hearing. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, then all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion carried. The next section is to discuss the possible action on the following items. Number nine, discussion of possible action regarding the meeting minutes from Tuesday, December 12, 2023. Is there a I motion? make a motion that we approve the minutes. Second the motion. Okay. Motion by Diana, second by Paul to approve the meeting minutes from December 12, 2023. 
Anything further to discuss? Hearing nothing, then all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Number 10. Discussion of possible referral to a future addenda. Tim Schwecki, Civitech Consulting, regarding zoning code audit slash update process and timeline. Oh, okay, so we're on, uh, I'm not sure, are we going to be able to? I'm not right? sure if he's available or not. Um, he had emailed me back um, saying that he had to be on the road at 5.30 for a meeting at 6.30. Okay, not um, available. So I said that we were uh, running behind for agenda items, and I asked him if he still wanted to present or move to the next meeting, and he said, yes, please, we'll get it done. What uh, does that mean? What does that mean? Well, I'm not sure what that means. What, you could, what we could do is I can read you the staff report while you try to contact him. Yeah, I have his number, so we can try to call him. That's okay. what I was so going to do. We'll, we'll, uh, okay. we'll multitask. All right, uh, so in Which August man. In August 2023, uh, the town of Rome entered into a professional services agreement uh, with Civitech Consulting LLC for services uh, related to the town zoning code, uh, Chapter 360. Under scope of services, Civitech will perform an audit of the town zoning code and provide findings, recommendations on potential code revisions. Included for reference is the general scope of services for the zoning code audit, which provides an overview of services uh, constituting the audit. At prior meetings, the Planning Commission began general discussions surrounding sections for specific focus, such as uh, zoning district permitted and conditional uses, uh, and overall fit for land use and development in the town. Uh, additionally, subcommittee work uh, took place uh, in review and recommendations in the edits of various components of the town's comprehensive plan. The zoning caught on and recommendations will help serve as an opportunity to revisit those discussions and together those past efforts uh, and tie together, sorry, those past efforts as potential potential code updates are considered. Easier to write it than read it. Yeah. Well, what we might do, though, did we reach him or no? No. No, it just said, hi, you reached zoning. Huh? Just want to pass it and then come back, try and come back to it, or? We can yeah. try one more time well, tonight. Yeah, maybe. Would that be your suggestion? <laughs> maybe when we do that meeting in two weeks, maybe we can get him, because what we have on tap is that um, why this piece is kind of important is maybe you can add Nick. What we really want to focus on is that we're working with Sam Sch Schultz, who's a land use. Um, maybe you want to talk about it more. No, I'm getting a little bit of a sure. frog in my throat, but Sam is also helping us in the Rome Town Center. We're looking at land, especially where we have housing. We're getting a lot of ish interest in workforce housing. Um, multi-family uh, 55 plus and it's important that we really focus if we're going to look at the zoning code audit that we start with the, the housing in the Rome Town Center and what we're doing over there so if you want to expand on that thank you uh, yeah so there uh, as was stated there's a couple moving parts here yes. uh, so we have a couple consultants that uh, are working on just various aspects of what would be the zoning code right so uh, Mr. Schultz is, is looking at the Rome Town Center. Certainly there's components of that in, uh, well, the large components of that in uh, Chapter 360. There's also the design plan and other, uh, you know, documents that are at play. Uh, so uh, I think the opportunity there is there to align some of that work with the work that, that Tim's going to do. I think that's going to be some of the kind of presentation and, and pieces to talk through uh, because we are uh, currently working, I believe, with one consultant to, uh, in the very near future to have him uh, provide us uh, some recommendations for the Rome Town Center. The opportunity is there to kind of align the audit with that and put priority there, uh, perhaps, you know, to, to make sure it coincides with that. As well as Commercial A, we were also talking about the Gateway District lining up right after that, mm -hmm. as well as permitted and conditional uses. Conditional uses in that area and then expanding from there. So those are the pieces of the zoning code we'd really like to look at auditing first. And then zoning hub is coming online real soon. So that's where we were hoping to start the focus first. I have a question with regard to the letter that we re that was included in our packet. Mm -hmm. um, I want to make sure I have the correct second page because the date on the second page is different than the date on the first page. Oh, interesting. But it is the same. It, it is. I yeah. believe you have the right second. Okay, page. I didn't want. I wanted to make sure I had the right number, the cost, and everything else that it you didn't do. go up for. Yeah, you it do. is exactly the same. Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. This was this was agreed to last last year and passed.
passed by the board. Yep. It was all agreed to and signed and everything was passed by the board last year. For the audit. For the audit. So yeah. what are we actually being asked to approve tonight? Anything? You're nothing, not asked you're not nope. So we're just nothing. this is an information only yep. that and we're gonna so go ahead with the audit. Yep. So if we don't, if we, if if Tim can't join us tonight, uh, we, we have him at, at a future meeting uh, just to give the kind of an overview of what that would look like. It'll really be a presentation conversation with him on on kind of how he, you know, what he's going to be looking for through the process, how he proceeds through the process, just so we're up to speed on on kind of how that's going to go, uh, and then we can uh, maybe express some or identify some priority areas that we might have. Uh, and, and he may ask for that and give us a timeline. So really just a general kind of kickoff presentation is what we intended here. And, and uh, by all means, we can have him back at a future meeting. We'll make sure you have the right page because, yeah, this was this was approved Hi. by the, bud by the board last help. year, and it's in the Please budget for this year to proceed. Have a great then I would suggest if we can't get a hold of them right now that we continue with the rest of the agenda so these folks don't have to stick around for yep. so long. And Absolutely. we can follow up at the end of the meeting with another well, phone call or whatever one point I would like to perhaps make is if you do do this next month at the meeting Zoom and even. we have to narrow down like what our priorities would be as a commission that the conditional use permits on the zoning be looked at real carefully mm -hmm. especially one in particular which is the campground issue on conditional use um, and other others so, you know, next month perhaps, if, if it's going to go that far next month, but that would be one of my concerns. Okay. All right, then item number 11, discussion and possible recommendation to the town board, consideration of a review, revised site plan, plan of operation for Wisconsin Trap Shooting Association to construct a storage building on the property located at 1312 Akron Drive, also described as Government Lot 14, Section 6, Town 20 North, Range 6 East, Town of Rome, Adams County, Wisconsin, parcel number 30-608. <coughs> oh. Go ahead. Before, before a motion, uh, there were a couple things that were discussed that I would just maybe reiterate before, uh, for consideration before you make your motion. Recall again that there's a findings of fact in your packet. Uh, so I think there were uh, two things that were brought up during the public hearing. One was screening of waste containers. Uh, the second one was uh, that it, it would be actually my recommendation that we put, include a condition in there that when the Hall of Fame building would be ready for a permit, uh, that the design uh, and layout uh, comes back to the Planning Commission for approval. Okay. Just to make it very, it, because there are some, uh, there's some language, substantial modification to site plan, plan of operation that triggers it needing to come back. Since this is in there, technically, as a as kind of a drawn out piece, I think we want to be very clear that we expect that back here to just to review what that design and plan is uh, for for signing off on. So okay. I'd recommend that you include that as your okay. as a condition. That fell under our performance. Okay, um, I will make a motion to approve or to uh, have the site plan and plan of operation. Um, go to the town board for approval uh, along with the findings of fact as presented but including as one of the conditions that the uh, refuse containers and or recyclable containers be um, screened or hidden by some means and that the future development of the Hall of Fame and proposal come back to the plan commission for approval. Okay. I'll second the motion. Okay. Motion is made by Diana, seconded by Bill to approve the <coughs> or to recommend to the town board the revised site plan and plan of operation for the construction of a storage building for the Wisconsin Trap Shooters Association, uh, including the findings of fact screening of waste containers and the uh, coming back to the Planning Commission for the future building of the Hall of Fame. Any other discussion? Hearing none, then all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item number 12. 
we're going to pass that on to a, a future agenda, correct? A special well, meeting? Do we, need, do we need to make a motion to do that? I think we have future agenda items oh, okay. uh, or, or next agenda items, next meeting date. We can set that up okay. at that time or we can do it here. Do it. I think we'll, we'll let's move it towards the end so we can get these folks out of here. They've been sitting here for a long time. <laughs> um, and as well as number 13. So we'll skip down to number 14 then. Discussion of possible action, consideration of the issuance of a conditional use permit for the following purpose. A short-term rental property located at 429 10th Avenue, owned by Joseph Palaccio. Described as doing business as Rome Recovery LLC, located in the southwest one quarter, northwest one quarter, section 22, town 20 north, range 60, town of Rome, Adams County, Wisconsin, parcel number 30-871. If yes, I sir. Could just, this Please. is the only other one that I'll, I'll make a note of, but I'll just generally note that there are findings of fact for each of the short term rentals. This particular one, though, uh, just recall that there is the recommendation from the fire department uh, for the acknowledgement, uh, and so it might be a recommended condition then that uh, you uh, include applicant providing an acknowledgement letter, an insurance acknowledgement that the road is a low, no, a low maintenance road uh, with limit, that could have limited access. Wouldn't that be true of all public? Right. Yeah, well, and, and that's why I didn't say anything specific. Just yeah. just an acknowledgement that it's a low maintenance rule that could. It says emergency services. Can you explain the insurance aspect to me again? Right. Well, so I, we do have an insurance requirement, uh, and the insurance requirement is to include uh, some kind of sign off that they understand it's a short term used for short term rental purposes. Uh, the included piece there is that there may be some uh, there may be some consideration that insurance would give if there's if there's a limitation or, or a effect or impact on uh, emergency services. That was that's the only place that came from. It doesn't need to be included. Again, it's it's your decision to make, but those would be just two things that, that were noted. Mm -hmm. The acknowledgement letter would be the other thing. Mr. Chair, I have a question. Does that absolve us and the town and the emergency service providers of all responsibility should something happen? Well, I mean, something can happen at any point. That, you know, right, I mean, yeah, but I mean, this, just this because it's in the finding of facts and there's a letter and the insurance says he acknowledges that, I mean, I think the, the issue here is that is that when we do our inspections, in this one in particular, uh, there was a concern that we received from that inspection that there was, uh, that there, at times of the year, if it was you know, winter, for example, it could have an impact on the emergency service, and that's, that's where it came from. I don't know that it necessarily absolves you know, one way or the other. It's just that we uh, kind of make sure that if it's being used for rental, uh, that, that there's a sign-off. But if we just reference the fire chief statement, does that work? I mean, you can. It just you need the acknowledgement, and then the, the point comes back up. Uh, are you just having the property owner acknowledge it, or or the insurance as well? I, I understand the question and, and what you're saying. Um, maybe just the property owner acknowledgement at least. I don't know how would we how would we get an insurance company to do that kind of a waiver. It, it's not a waiver. It's an, it's, an acknowledgement. It's, just, yeah, it's, it's no different than we include. Uh, we have a requirement right now and, and require it that when somebody's going through the short term rental license uh, process, that they have, uh, they provide us insurance, and the insurance does uh, have an acknowledgement that it's being used for short term rental purposes. But a further acknowledgement that this one might not be serviced. It's not that it's not going to be well, serviced. Well, I mean, no, that the emergency could be delayed, vehicles sir. delayed or lack would be delayed. Of the, I, I, I don't know the feasibility of that. It's going to probably depend on, on insurance companies, uh, you know, again. I is this something that we would maybe require the property owner to uh, advise the renter of prior to making a rent rental, that it's not an improved road? 
so that they know what they're getting into? Actually, if I might add, that is my intention to begin with. I know it may be your intentions. I'm just asking the question whether we should make that a, a, a condition. Or not. A condition. But then if we make, <coughs> it, then make us liable. I just well, think the acknowledgement well, well, by the owner, thereby you're putting the onus on the owner, that they're aware of this. Yes. Which, and this which, is the use of the property. Which they would sign in, in the findings of fact. And, right. and to uh, Mr. Campbell's comment, it could be uh, maybe the acknowledgement by the property owner of that and, and uh, that he will inform the, the renters or prospective renters of, of that fact. I, I would take the man at his word. In all honesty, right I think he made a good presentation, and I understand where he's coming from. Right. So, so I guess I will make a motion that we move the item forward with the findings of fact and include an additional condition noted that. Uh, property let's see what do we want to say here that, that there he that the property it. owner fully un understands that it could be delayed and delivery of emergency services due to the fact that there is a low maintenance road adjacent to the property so second second the motion Motions made by Bill, second by Paul, to approve the conditional use permit. Findings of fact, which should include that the, there is a potential for delayed or lack of emergency services due to the fact that the dwelling in question is on a low maintenance or unimproved road, and that the owner acknowledged this. Okay. Can I have discussion? Okay. Yeah. Um, I would also like to um, amend the findings of fact. And I'm going to do this on all of them. Uh, 7C, the applicant has met and cross out or is in the process of complying with. And then um, after in the second sentence and cross out, which will be a requirement prior to issuance of the short-term rental license because that should already have been done. Just cross out that language. 7 C. 7 C. What if you just took out the words, or is in the process of complying? With. The applicant has met, met all, all of the conditions. Correct. Just cross those words out. And then cross out the last part of that sentence, which will be a requirement prior to issuance of the short-term rental license. <coughs> correct? Yes. All of the conditions yeah. of application slash issuance for a short-term rental license. Yeah. I'm under the assumption that before it even gets here, that everything with the short-term rental license is to be done. So why are we putting that in the findings? They met or are in the process, and they, well, in this case, they It says, right. it. or That's is in the process of, no, they're, they're done, right? Okay. That's, and that's on all of them? that I would like that and maybe in all future ones that we just not have to deal with that in the findings of fact and also I would also like to see if there's some kind of a condition we can put on here that uh, the owner will not be renting out the property when he is more than 25 miles away for any length of time more than a 24-hour period or something with uh, discussion so who would I'll amend the motion to accept those okay and okay. Paul do you uh, accept the amended motion yes okay so the motion is made by Bill and Paul and amended to include the fact that the oh boy <laughs> um, it is um, We have the wording for the uh, the driveway issue. Is that correct, Nick? Yes. And that the other condition be that the property owner does not rent the property out if he's more than 25 miles away for an extended period of time. 
unless he has a property manager in place. Very good. Okay. okay. Yes, and, and we'll make the changes in, in the initial rate, and then going forward, we'll update. Yes. Them. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Done and done. Present. All in favor, unless there's further discussion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Where are we at here? I think we are on 13, 14, Bogey. Okay, item number 15, discussion of possible action, consideration of the issuance of a conditional use permit. For the following purpose, the short-term rental at the property located at 1314 Bogey Trail, owned by Bogey Trail, LLC, also described as Lot 8 of Bogey Addition to Lake Arrowhead, located in the southeast one quarter, northeast one quarter, section 19, town 20 north, range 6 east, town of Rome, Adams County, Wisconsin, parcel number of 30-2909-507. Yeah. Um, I'll make a motion that we approve the short-term rental uh, for the property located at 1314 Bogey Trail, incorporating the findings of fact with the removal of 7C language previously discussed. I'll second. How about a corrected language and not remove the language? Because yeah, you're not taking the whole thing out. We're just amending the language. So yes. it's not a total removal. Is that okay? Amended language? Sure. Any initial? <laughs> Is there a second? A second. <laughs> okay. Motion is made by Diana, seconded by Bill to approve the conditional use permit for 1314 Bogey Trail, accepting the findings of fact and with the amended language on 7C. Any other discussion? Hearing none, then all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Number 16. Discussion of possible action. Consideration of the issuance of a conditional use permit for the following purpose. The short term rental at the property located at 227 Derby Court, owned by Amanda and Billy Van Wee, also doing or doing business as BAV Camelot LLC, also described as Lot 51 of Dundee Addition to Lake Camelot, located in the northwest one quarter, <laughs> southwest one quarter, section 10, town 20 north, range 6 east. Town of Rome, Adams County, Wisconsin. Parcel number of 30-5378. You go, you gotta work oh. it out. Go ahead, keep going. <laughs> okay, I make a recommendation job. that we approve uh, the short term, the, nope, nope, the conditional use permit for the short term rental at 227 Derby Court incorporating the findings of fact with the correct amended, amended language on 7C. Second. Okay. Motion by Diana, second by Jerry to approve the conditional use permit for 227 Derby Court with the uh, acceptance of the finding of fact and the amended language in item 7C of the findings of fact. Any further discussion? Hearing none, then all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item number 17. Discussion of possible action, consideration of the issuance of a conditional use permit for the following purpose. The short-term rental at the property located at 1477 Rapids Trail, owned by Shauna and Benjamin Olson, also described as Lot 1 of CSM 6050, also known as Lots 8 and 9 of Red Cloud Addition to Lake Arrowhead, located in the northwest one quarter, southwest one quarter, section 12, town 20 north, Range 5 East, Town of Rome, Adams County, Wisconsin. Parcel number 30-4074-10. I'll make a recommendation that we accept the conditional use permit for 1477 Rapids Trail, incorporating the findings of fact with the amendment to the language in 7C. I'll second. Okay. Okay. Motion by Diana, second by Lori, to approve the conditional use permit for 1477 Rapids Trail, accepting the findings of fact and the amended language in 7C of the findings of fact. Any other discussion? Yes, I just have one question. Okay. You say cut a he or cut a hay? Cut a hay. You must be born and raised there. <laughs> From Milwaukee, couldn't help myself. UCLA. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion, Motion carried. Carries. Item number 18. 
Discussion of possible action. Consideration of the issuance of a conditional use permit for the following purpose. A short-term rental at the property located at 1099 South Archer's Way, owned by Brian and Kimberly Jackson. Also described as Lot 5 of Deer Lodge Assessor's Plot to Lake Sherwood. Located in the northeast one quarter, southwest one quarter, section 16, town 20 north, range 6 east, town of Rome, Adams County, Wisconsin, parcel number 30-1971. I make a motion that we accept the conditional use permit for um, short-term rental at 1099 South Ar Archer's Way, uh, incorporating the findings of fact um, with the amendment to the language in 7C. Second. Okay, motion by Diana, second by Lori to approve the conditional use permit for 1099 South Archer's Way. Accepting the findings of fact and the amended language in item number 7C and the findings of fact. Any other discussion? Hearing none, then all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. I don't remember. The next section is dates and items for future agenda meetings. Um, everybody has their. Uh, I think we need to pick a date then to have our uh, campground. Please. Tell Taylor, um, there was a lot of copying, a lot of documentation in that. I think she would really appreciate it if you could please hang on to all of your stuff for the campground agenda items. Okay, please, if you would. And then these two will give her a back <coughs> for the next meeting, all right? So if you could just hang on to all of your items so that she doesn't have to do all of that again. Okay. Appreciate it. And your you're leaving on the 28th? I will be gone on the 27th. On the 27th. Okay, um, if possible, so Diane can be included in the uh, meeting with the campground. Uh, what is like the w next week, the le week of the 19th, look for everybody's calendars. Um, I'll be open to any suggestions. I can do it any, any day, any time, any day. Okay. Monday morning, I have a committee meeting. Okay. So besides I, Monday, I do briefly. also. Monday. Something came up on Monday. <laughs> I got the right day, <laughs> right? Yes, you do. Nine o'clock. Uh, nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. I can even do it on the 26th if we, uh, we want to go to Okay, the if we would happen to do it on a Monday, could we do it in the afternoon? No. No? Okay. Um, how about... Uh, uh, somebody, did I say something? I'm sorry, which days? Okay. In the afternoon on Wednesday. Wednesday afternoon? I can do it in the afternoon. I have a noon meeting. I've got a doctor's appointment that day. Wednesday afternoon work? Uh, Wednesday afternoon? We're talking this Wednesday the 21st. Weekend, weekday. Wednesday the 21st. What time? Week tomorrow. Well, do we go, what, 3 o'clock? Does that work for everybody? Do we start a little early? Or even earlier? I can do it early. I can do it. Whatever I Diana, have, whatever fits. Um, fine. I can do it like one thirty on. Okay, so let's say on the twenty first, I'm available. Two o'clock. Two o'clock. Two o'clock. Two o'clock. All right. Okay. So that's two. Two twenty one at two p.m. At two p.m. Very good. That was easy. Oh yeah, easier than I thought. <laughs> I. It's just a head cold, Lori. I think. So do I. Because she had influenza A already. Because I got a trip coming up. Can I, can I just ask a question just so everybody, yourself. everybody's on the same page? We'll, we will have then that agenda item for the campground. If Tim can make it, are we okay with him kind of kicking off the Oh, that'd be, that'd be great. Yes. Good idea. Everyone's okay with that? Yes. Okay, just making sure that nobody's caught off guard seeing two agenda items on this. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Um... And then we already have uh, reviewing camping regulations and developed subdivisions. Which also may be part of the discussion. The audit as well. So oh, I see. Maybe not at that meeting. Yeah. So we'll we're, save that for March. Okay. Yeah. And, and good. there are there are other uh, applications we've received that will be in March as well. So th that again, agenda will build itself. We want to do permitted and conditional uses, but that housing thing in the Rome Town Center because we've got development. Yeah. Okay. 
That's fine. That's good with me. So are we also setting the March date? For well, the March date will be March 12th, 2024, 4 o'clock, and I know you'll be gone. Correct. Okay. Are you going to call Oh, sure. From the pool. <laughs> Um, the staff yes, report on this. There's a tall board approval stuff there. Um, yeah, you don't have them signed? Yeah. You can have them signed. Um, just well, make sure I that lost they understand. It That's got to come to the tall board for approval. Okay. There, there was something on, uh, with the um, site plan, plan of operations. Yes. That we got from. Yeah. I had a question with regard to that specifically. It said seemingly, and that bothered me, and I didn't understand what that meant. Yeah. On the report that was provided to us from the from the site plan plan of operation portion of the Barnum. Right, Bank. and that was Here. the one that was in the internal one. Yes. yes. I don't understood. He, I don't understand what that meant. And if there's something we should be asking for at the next meeting that would make that word seemingly be t taken out of it, the, the plan commission administrator report. This one. This one. Yeah. Item uh -huh. seven B and C. It says plan commission administrator report. Yeah. And it says representatives sign new business information sheet and seemingly meets requirements. I don't know what that means. I would like clarification on that. And then it also talks about the operation checklist and seemingly meets requirements. What are we missing that makes it seemingly and not meets? It's in the packet right for that agenda item. It's kind of the, the cover. I don't understand that. Oh, yep. Agreed. Yep. I agree. Okay. Can we either have clarification on it or additional documentation oh, yeah. to make that word go away? I'm just I my question. Okay. Is it on, it's on that one and which other one? It's, it, it's both. Both of them are on that report. The word seemingly is used twice. Seemingly we'll get it from them tomorrow. Will you be here tomorrow? Thursday. I don't know if I'll be able to stand up. <laughs> Where else? What other paragraph do you see? It's, it's both in the, the same set, paragraph. The, the next. Yep, it's the next sentence. One relates to the site plan, plan of operation checklist, and one relates to the uh, new business information. Uh -huh. You can have it anytime you want. <laughs> Oh, well, we're saving that. I want to get a yeah, we'll gold one for one Diana. <laughs> can I no? Okay, I'll see what I can do. I also take Bitcoin. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm not that advanced in my technology that... Uh, so are we uh, gaveling the meeting to a yeah, close? Uh, is there... Then I'll declare the meeting adjourned at 6.43 p.m. Okay, now we're done. Okay, thank you.